Hi everybody, we're back with Shadows Over Ravenloft. So 22 announcements before we begin though. Um, we're still donating money, raising money for the Bail Project. You can see it up here in the right hand corner. We're currently sitting at $205 out of $1,200 and our goal, yeah, it's $1,200 and that is until July 10th. So hopefully we can get that raised until July 10th, get that goal up there until July 10th. Um, and that's for the Bail Project. They help out they help reunite families who have been targeted by, or um, have to deal with the mass incarceration system of the United States and stuff. And also, they're currently working at getting people who have been wrongfully thrown in jail because of the Black Black Lives Matter protests. So, it's a good cause of support right now. And yeah, the incarceration system isn't all that great anyway. So, yeah. Um, one of the things that America's number one in. Yeah. Among other stuff. Uh, so, yeah, that's what we're raising money for. It's for a good cause. Uh, and then fo in the months following, indefinitely, we'll be raising money for other BIPOC-related charities and trans-related charities, just based on how shitty the world is being to those people right now. And, uh, yeah, it's not cool. So we'll be supporting uh, those kind of charities going forward indefinitely until the day I die. Uh, which hopefully <laughs> isn't tomorrow or anything. Um, fingers crossed. Uh, also, um, because I saw my resting BPM today. Anyways, um, it was like 111. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah, this quarantine's been doing bad stuff to me. Anyways, uh, we also have a podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Podbean. Mimics and Monstrosities. Check it out. You can listen to... What's today? Thursday? Episode 62 of Beneath the Tide will be... No, episode 63 of Beneath the Tide will be going up today. No, episode 62 of, of Beneath the Tide will be going up tonight. Ugh, so mixed up. Because 64 is next week. Uh, and episode 3 of Legends of Wild Mount is going up tomorrow. Uh, the... And then episode four of Legends of Wild Mount is going live on our YouTube channel in about 20 minutes. And that is called episode four, Crushed Heads and Jam Sessions. Uh, and that is going up uh, tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, if you want to find out why it's called that, tune in, I guess. Uh, and leave a like on our YouTube videos. Because it's nice. It's real nice. Um, but without further ado... Last we left off in Ravenloft, you all essentially dealt with two more guards of Kazan's prison, a Storm Giant and a Baylor. The Storm Giant fight was interesting. Uh, Bernard essentially, with some help from some spells, getting cast from Ophelia and then Una kind of flying in on the broom, dealt with said Storm Giant with relative ease. The Storm Giant did hit hard, though as storm giants do. And to get to the said storm giant, you all had to swim underwater through an underwater system of caves. But nonetheless, everything went fine. And then, after dealing with the storm giant, you all decided to head to the next area known as the Hall of Screams, which turned out to be a labyrinthian kind of maze, uh, where screaming faces were carved into the stone walls that dealt psychic damage if the walls were messed with. After spending about an hour and a half moving through this labyrinth system, finding some treasure along the way, i.e. a potion of giant size, something along the likes, it changes your size when you drink it, um, the party found the guard of this area, which turned out to be a Baylor. And during the fight with the Baylor, things got a little nasty. Uh, it was getting pretty dire. Uh, but the Baylor was finished, and as Baylors do when they die, they explode. Everyone succeeded on the saving throws and did not take too much fire damage from the explosion, thankfully. Uh, and everyone uh, bamped back to uh, the prison. Unfortunately, because Una was pulled off the broom by the Baylor's whip, the broom was left behind <laughs> in the prison cell. Uh, and you all decided, okay, that was enough work for one day, and you all took a long rest uh, in Kazan's prison with only two more chains remaining, which means only two more guards remaining, 
and two more veils remaining. The one veil that you could decipher as remaining, as I pull up my Google document for this, because I forgot to do that, ba -ba -ba, was the Tomb of the Eighth Flame, which is written in Draconic, and the party sort of deduced they were most likely going to be fighting something Draconic. Uh, and the other area was written in a language no one could really decipher, so they have no idea what lies beyond in that veil. And that is where we're going to pick up the four uh, people, Bernard, Ophelia, Una, and Strahd the Redeemed, uh, getting up from their long rest. And just so none of you are confused, I have added Strahd the Redeemed to the party just through the D&D &D Beyond extension, just so I don't have to manually add him to every encounter that we come across. That's nice. So to make my life easier in the long run. But yes, you all wake up from your long rest in this prison cell. Kazan has two more chains attached to his inner thighs. Okay. Uh. Hmm. So Bernard is going to. Uh. He's going to. Put the runes on people's gear. Um, like last time. He's going to give Uvar to Una and the Cloud Rune, sky, the Sky, to uh, uh, Dr. Bauer, Ophelia. Uh, he's got a Strength Rune, but he's noticing that Strahd might be... Um, a bit beefy. Yeah, because yeah, that's right. Last week, Strahd uh, drank that one potion and got super buff, permanently. Yeah. Buff. So his his strength score is twenty five. Yeah. So er, it can twenty something crazy. <laughs> yeah, it was a permanent like plus five to strength Pl plus. I don't remember. Yeah, permanent plus five bonus to strength score. So he's at twenty three. Yeah, which is, uh, you know. So, w what I'm getting at is that uh, Bernard is going to give him the Frost Rune. Which he can invoke with a bonus action. Uh, and get a plus, an extra plus two to his strength for ten minutes. And he can do that twice per short rest. Like plus two to his strength score? Yes. Cool. Uh, and he has advantage on animal handling and intimidation checks. And that's twice per short or long rest? Per short. Okay. Strahd wakes up. He's like, oh, yeah. Hey, Dub. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I got a thing here for you. Do you is there anything specific you want it to put on? He It'll help. Might help you out. He pulls out that sword that's got veins of blood running down the blade. Yeah, I don't think I want to touch that one. Is that, can I do a different one? <laughs> this is the only weapon I have here. You can touch the hilt. Yeah, all right. <laughs> and he'll just make it on there. Okay, he sheaths it. I prepared uh, some spells for today as well. Just in case, if it is a dragon we're fighting, I've prepared a fly spell so I can make everyone who can't fly, fly. That sounds that sounds pretty neat. I was kind of concerned, um, because I don't know. Should we should we go group? Should we go after the one we don't know first? You know, and then if we because if we go after the one we don't know first, we're going in there at one hundred percent. True. Right, and then we know whether or not we have a good idea. We might have a better idea as to whether or not where we come out after that, if we're going to be in a good spot to fight this thing. We kind of have a really good idea as to what it is. True. Probably some type of red dragon. I don't know. It's most likely a red dragon if it's eight flame draconic. So could be another I mean, type, but it's probably most likely a red dragon. So that's my uh. That's my uh, 
idea to put out amongst the group if you guys think it would be smarter to go after the one we don't know first. I agree with Bernard. While we're full. Yeah. That's... Honestly, sounds like a really great idea. Alright. Well, the bad news is, I already thought up of a bunch of ways we could fight against the dragon, but I don't know what this other thing is gonna be, so we're gonna have to play it by ear. Um, I, I, th I guess one of the big things is don't group up. The last couple guys we fought, are gonna, they kind of have big uh, things that hit everybody. So we can't group up too much. Right. So I, so whenever I, whenever I close the distance, guys, I'm gonna try and get at like uh, a right angle to you, so that whenever they hit me, they can't like hit you with a cone or whatever of a blast of whatever they got. So I'll try to be either at a right angle to where you guys are, or right behind them. All right. I'll try to be up high because I can do that. Hi. That said, Strad, mm. you and me, we gotta sync up too. Are we gonna be on opposite ends, or are we gonna try and like right angle this too? I mean, you can pretty much do whatever you want, big guy. Jeez. Don't feed his ego. <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, I think it depends on what we're going against. We don't know what we're going against if we go through that door. That's uh, true. That's true. We could be completely underwater again, and then this is all moot. Yes, or we could be in a volcano. No, I doubt it, but maybe we'll be in complete darkness or other things. Uh, so all, all those who can cast spells, uh, do we have anything that might like put on a whole bunch of stuff and then hopefully some of that stuff is covered? Yeah. Like, water breathing or... I know some of you are still working on preparing spells for the day. I don't think it'll, it'll be another water area. Okay. Personally. Yeah, they're not. <laughs> call it your, call it your uh, intuition. And if it is another water area, I don't have water breathing, but I can polymorph everyone into fish or something. Or oh, sharks. Okay. Cool. That only works with, for like beast stuff? Yes. Darn it. <laughs> <laughs> So we're going through not the Tomb of the Eighth Flame one, we're going through the other one, then. The question mark. The question mark. Fair enough. We're all in tip-top right now, with the best you're gonna be. Um, right. None of these other guys have dropped any... What do you... you know... I well, I suppose some of them have dropped a bit of loot, so I don't know. We could be... No more second guessing. Yeah, I feel, like, mark. I feel like that's by design. They don't want it to be easy for people to break this guy out. Yeah. I mean, it's been pretty easy for us to break him out. Like, no, we've almost died like five times. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but have we fully died? Almost. There is the death like, tyrant that was pretty bad. It's either a yes or a no. There is no maybe. The Baylor you know? was real bad. That was real bad. Yes, it was bad, but we have not died, so I consider that easy, you know? D uh, okay. If Your definition go. of easy, if Ophelia. Of dies, if any of us dies, we all lose. Yeah, does anyone none have of us can push forward through and this. Nobody right. has yeah. any diamonds to bring anybody back. Yeah, and whose fault is that, Strahd? Yours for not being smart and getting a powerful wizard and telling a powerful wizard you don't exactly know all your personal information. Well, maybe if you had shared some of it, a little bit of information beforehand, we wouldn't have done that. How did I know you'd come across Vonnegeist? <laughs> exactly. How are we so, supposed to know? Uh, children, to children. To the door. Now, okay, now. let's go. Um, <laughs> All right, who's going to that door first? <laughs> Bernard will stand there okay. and kind of gauge everybody else's looks. And if. Una will have her. Pretty dagger out, and she'll go forward through it first. Oh, that darn dagger. Okay, who wanna go through first? That damn dagger. Dagger. <laughs> Did she do that again? Wait, I, I cast her move curse on her, didn't I? 
God damn Not it. The, yeah. Yeah. Well. And he's going to go through next. Yep. Bernard. He's going to look back at Ophelia. If you want to go, let's go, I guess. Who knows? Kazan, as you guys are, as you guys, the last two of you got to go in, Kazan goes, good luck. Yeah, just don't kill us after all this, you crazy bastard. <laughs> Yes, oh, that would be so the nude wizard who has nothing on him is going to kill you. Who knows? You could have some crazy cantrips. Yes, just hidden hiding, away hiding in, my in your butt. Yes, in my, I said it. Or in my <laughs> scarf here. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, he stores his spell components in his butt crack and his foreskin. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wallet. Anyways, um, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna take my own psychic damage. Um, all right, so you both go through the veil. Yes. After okay. that, yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so you guys enter this veil, and it's you're immediately in constant daylight, and it's a forest, healthy, and it you see clouds floating up in the sky, and there's a huge mountain in the distance. Um, Ophelia, you feel real good when you come into this area, though. Ophelia, the entire time you're here, you are under the effects of a permanent bless spell. Because of your alignment, little Ophelia. Oh! Okay. Yeah. So, just so I can reiterate what that is. Ooh. Yeah, some of these areas Ooh, are affected this? based on people's alignments, and... Yeah. So, Ophelia, uh, whenever you make an attack roll or a saving throw, you can add a d4 to those. And that lasts for the entirety that you're in this area. This demi-plane area. Yeah. Hell yeah, we love this area. Right, so you guys kind of see Ophelia look around. Right. You see Ophelia have like a little glow to her a little bit? And it's no. a blessed spell, so you can do whatever you want to do with that if you're thinking. Yeah. So Rod's like, well, this place looks fucking pretty. Much better than Ravenloft. Well, Ooh. I don't know about that. Hold on, hold on. But I was gonna look around a bit. Sure. So you're saying it's like just real nice looking. Yeah, there's mountains in the pretty. distance. There's clouds up in the air. Uh, you can hear like water, like spring water nearby. <laughs> Does this seem kind of otherworldly in its quote perfection? Perception or investigation? Okay. Uh, we'll do investigation. Fifteen. Fifteen? Yeah. Oh yeah. It looks like it is meant to be purely blissful and perfect um guys uh now i i could be wrong i could be wrong but we might be dealing with uh with something a bit more on the good side oh wait maybe that might make sense now that i think about it the script because his knowledge, you all saw the script of the door, and it looked like it was close to being infernal. And Strahd's like, oh, Celestial. Yeah. This is Mount Celestia. That's the name of the plane. The gods? Uh, Isn't that where the gods live? Uh, not really. Uh, Mount Celestia. Well, actually, if anyone wants to do a history check, I will allow that instead. Oh, or Scar, yeah. just okay. a walking <laughs> exposition yeah. machine. I got a 22 oh, history check. 22? Uh, 17 history check. Okay. So, uh, Mount Celestia is a model of justice and order and celestial grace and endless mercy where angels and champions of good guard against incursions of evil. Uh, it is one of the few places on the plains where travelers can let down their guard. Its inhabitants strive constantly to be as righteous as possible. 
Countless creatures aim to reach the highest and most sublime peak of the mountain, but only the purest souls can. Gazing toward that peak fills even the most jaded of travelers with awe. And because this is uh, Mount Celestia, in contra contrast to the dissonance experienced by evil creatures here, good creatures are literally blessed by the pervasive benefic beneficent beneficence uh, whatever, of the plane. Creatures of good alignment gain the benefit of the blessed spell as long as they remain on the plane. In addition, finishing a long rest on the plane grants a good creature the benefit of a lesser restoration spell. And I don't, I think Ophelia is the only good aligned creature here. Yeah, Bernard's too cowardly to be uh, good. <laughs> He's neutral. And Strahd is still evil. Strahd's a bitch. Una's Una. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah, we're in Mount Celestia. I, roughly, I believe. That's worrisome. What in Celestia wants to keep him there? Uh, also, based on that check, Bernard, you would know the native yeah. creatures of this place are Archons, Solars, Hollyphants, uh, what holly fans are like little golden furred elephants that fly around. Uh, planetars, so devas, uh, and Kirin, and yeah, and Kirins. So like, uh, how do I explain, explain what a Kirin is? Uh, a unicorn with, with some aspects, but has a stag-like body and covered in golden scales instead of fur. So yeah, this place is pumping with celestials. Dub. So, so uh, maybe, oh gosh, we'll have to keep an eye out, uh, look out for any radiant damage, I think. Oh, might be. yeah, good thing I'm not a vampire anymore. Yeah, you might be screwed there, bud. No, it's a good thing um, I'm not a vampire anymore, yeah. Uh, do we have anything to protect against something like that? I don't think so, unless someone has protection from evil and good. But wait, if this is... If these are good things, I mean, could we, like, convince them? Unless whatever the guard of this area is is a corrupted celestial. Well, that's... Oh, you mean like that baby? What baby? That undead, like... Oh, an atropod. Yeah. Uh, Atropods oh, are, are different. Okay, I thought they were like a you know, like an undead celestial thing. It's not really. Uh, Atropals are detritus. They're, they're believed to be the spawn of Atropis. Oh. Big undead planet. <sighs> okay. Um, well, I'm just about pushing my, my knowledge on this subject. Uh, I don't know. You guys have any ideas? As we're standing here with Una's blind sense, um, is there anything hidden or invisible within ten feet of her that she's picking up on? Nope. Okay. Nope. And as per the gods that kind of come to Mount Celestia every once in a while, there isn't really a god that governs 100% over Celestia, if I remember correctly. Oh, no, I am wrong entirely um one of the most prominent um of entities that kind of dwell in celestia are um oh i had the information too one sec everyone uh yes bahamut Well, I don't know about you guys, but uh, maybe we should flag down a a native and uh, see if there's a see if they can guide us to wherever this corrupted one is. They probably don't want it around as much as we do, if, if that is the case. Most likely. I don't know. Do we just go like, hey, hello? Wait, if it's good line creatures, does that mean? Every celestial here has that benefit that Ophelia has right now. 
I don't think the corrupted one would. Right, I mean... That's one way to find out. We are a testing family. Uh, and yeah, you yeah, guys can so... see a very clear path just that just goes forward through the forest. Yeah, I mean... Let's go. Far. Yeah, I suppose. Let's go, good boy. Una will start walking forward as everybody's like, hi, let's go. Okay. What's the marching order here? We got Una in front, essentially. Ophelia will be next. Okay. Oh, yeah, Bernard's there, sorry. Alright, so Straw is in the back <laughs> once again. All the, beef, all the beefcakes are in back. Mm -hmm. Jeez, we're, we're on a, we're, we are literally <laughs> mm -hmm. in ascending order. <laughs> It's actually more like bit, 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 so, bit. so we each can see over each other's heads. Yeah, because yeah, Strahd went up to like seven so something. Everybody has perfect vision. So why don't we do this all the time? I don't yeah. know. Man, could you imagine if I can get Castle Raven off the back and I'm this buff and tall? It'd be wonderful. No. Don't talk like that, buddy. I don't but want I, to put you down. But I want the castle back. It's my ancestral home. All right. You can have the castle, but... Oh, I have no intention of being a dark lord again. Fuck that. Yeah, that seemed kind of rough. I just want my mm. home back from... her. Yeah. We're going to put her down, right? Yeah, I mean, unless, yeah. unless we could do something to her that we did to you... I don't know. I've researched. I've researched my mm. thing for quite some time. Well, not really. But you were willing, right? Uh, yeah, no, she would be. She wanted her. Uh, yeah, whatever. L anyways, let's deal with let's one go. little snag at a time. Right. And uh, you guys start walking, and as you're walking along this this little dirt path, again, it's like meticulously clean. Like there's no like leaves on the path or anything, uh, and. Yeah. All along I was going to look out for... Oh, sorry. And all along the side of these paths are these little light posts. And there's just little blue orbs of light floating in these lanterns, just kind of... Just floating in space. That's cool. Uh, Does it look... Do they look like almost like lightning bugs in there? Or like, like legit like orbs? Just blue featureless orbs. I look around. It looks like you could like, like take the jar off and like open it. You can certainly try. <laughs> if that's a will of but you fail a saving throw, you're just like zero hit points. <laughs> <laughs> Una's gonna like look towards it, then like look back at Ophelia and just see Ophelia probably just be like. Okay, like Uno <laughs> will just turn back forward and yeah, keep walking. Yeah, this is most likely. So you know how there's the nine hells. That's where evil people go when they die. This is most likely where good people go to die, or when they die. Go ah. to die. Oh, <laughs> I worked oh, that boy. wrong. Yeah. Ah. So, uh, so there any like animals, like fauna here? Or? Uh. And Bernard's just look looking around for any like little. Maybe hoof tracks or like well, a little a little poo by a wild animal or something. Well, based <laughs> on the check you got, uh, I wouldn't exactly call them beasts, uh, but yeah, there's unicorns, uh, Kieran. Uh, there are things called foo dogs and foo lions and holly fans, little tiny flying elephants. Hmm. And there is the occasional radiant dragon. But I don't see any right now. No. Okay, I don't see any signs of nope. any of that. That's pretty weird. Okay, alright. Not even bugs. <laughs> this place is great. <laughs> I hate bugs. This place sucks. I don't like it. It's too It's too perfect. I, I everyone like it. love it here. I be too. <laughs> And anyway. This actually makes me want to brush my teeth. <laughs> Again. <laughs> so, uh, uh, and as you all start walking down this path, um, you cross a little 
there's like a little bridge that goes over a little babbling brook it's a nice wooden bridge with more of these like lanterns and a kind of like a roof over top it's like a half gazebo half bridge uh, and you kind of cross over it uh, and you can see like little fish swimming in the water like trout and stuff and wow uh, as, you guys, as you guys get deeper into the forest, I need everyone to make perception checks. Oh boy. Plus zero, let's go. Strahd's Five. Got, <laughs> Strahd's got a plus three. Plus zero. Ooh. Strahd's got a 21. Ooh, we started up strong. <laughs> so, Una, what do you get for perception? 26. 26. Ophelia. 10. Nice. Bernard. Five. Wait, you got 26, Una? Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm both. rolling disadvantage still. Uh, so both you and Strahd see what looks like a uh, temple in the distance, like a church. And it looks like they're, all the trees around that church are like have no leaves on them, and they're like rotting. And as you get closer, you and Strahd can kind of see what looks like just a pile of wildlife that has died within the radius of that church. There's a unicorn about 50 feet away, kind of just dropped on the ground, unmoving and dead. That Una and Strahd see. Is it like church is there, looks like 5 feet from or like 10 feet from it? Yeah, about 10 feet. There's just like... Death, yeah. Death. Una's gonna like slow down the pace and just kind of like turn to Ophelia and be like found a bat one, one of these things is not like the other Ophelia and like she's gonna like mm -hmm. point towards where the chapel is and like all the dead trees and you guys all see the unicorn kind of splayed out in the woods super dead I'm not a gambling woman but I would be willing to place money on that being where we need yeah, I, I, I'm a bit concerned, though. What happens when we break through that little uh, uh, perimeter? I don't know. It, maybe we're lucky, and it's just for the people, creatures that live here in the celestial plane. Mm. Well, perhaps a test is in order. <laughs> Want me to Una do just... this? I, Una just... Una's like... <laughs> She just starts walking forward. All right, as Testing soon as family. <laughs> Testing family. As soon as, as soon as you touch she the border. Like... Yeah, as soon as you touch the border where perfection meets death, um, you don't feel any different. She, like, puts her arm over to see if it, like, drops or anything like that. Just, like... Nothing happens. She does that a couple of times, and then, like, she looks back. She, like crosses like f like walks like a, like a five feet deeper in to see if there's like nothing happens anything else nope more dead animals you see like birds and rabbits just kind of all dead and they're growing, looking and some of them are growing mold like they it's like rapid decay she's gonna like turn back towards the group does it look weird looking back from like this way towards nope. perfection at all? Nope. Okay. Hey, look, I'm not dead for once, guys. It's fine. <laughs> As you shout out loud, <laughs> the doors of the chapel open. <laughs> and stepping is like... out is a large creature, about 12 feet tall. Uh, it looks like it has green skin, like a radiant green skin that's slightly gone grayish and corrupted, and lots of black veins kind of running across the body, a bald head, and a loincloth almost, and where two large feathery angel-like wings should be are just pure skeletal. And the creature walks forward, drawing a massive angelic greatsword from thin air, Everybody roll initiative. <laughs> but I just gonna be like, Strahd, me and Una, fly. <laughs> Una, Una just like She's turns too far to see away. this thing. I have to touch. Una just turns to, to see fly. this thing. 
looks back at them, All just right. like, correction, not dead yet. Yeah, I have to touch the oh cast boy. fly, and she's too far away. Una How and the and the Una? Una and the yeah. planetar yeah. are about uh thirty five feet away. Oh, this is fine. This is totally right. fine. So Strahd, hey. Strahd for initiative. Strahd, yeah, boy. All right, what Bernard get? <clears throat> Sixteen. Ophelia. Two. Una. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. So, uh, Una, this planetar walks out the front doors, conjures this giant angelic great sword. And is standing right in front of you, five feet, and it is uh, twelve feet tall. Ah, uh, dagger of soul scarring. Okay. Or attempt at least. Sure. Ooh, that, that, that. if this doesn't hit, this is bad. Thirty-one. Thirty-one most definitely hits. <laughs> this, <laughs> is just, not a, this is not a trask. Like... <laughs> Thank you. Plus 12. Okay. okay, so that will be... That'll be 9 uh, piercing damage and okay. 11 psychic damage. Okay. And then, do I get sneak attack on that? You... No. Do not. Okay, just make it, making sure. Um... Yeah, you ain't a swashbuckler, unfortunately. Bonus action, disengage, and sure. uh, looking behind him in the chapel, is there anything in there? It's collapsed and in ruin. Aside from Thank the God. organ. With a large, large Luna's pipe gonna, organ. Like... This thing's giant, so she's just gonna, like, bonus action, disengage, and, like, run behind into the chapel like behind like just like behind him like kind of like i guess like on like the edge of the chapel okay it's like not like going into it but like like All by right. the doors as you partially get closer to the chapel you can hear the organ actually playing music by itself and because you can hear the music i need a wisdom saving throw <laughs> You said wisdom, right? Correct. Dirty 20? Dirty 20 succeeds, you take half damage. Oh, but you are oh not that's a lot of damage. Half. But you don't take, you're not stunned from the uh, song, though. Uh, so half damage from this will be... Okay, so you take... Oop, oop, oop. Oh my god, I am writing in all the wrong numbers here. You take 11 points of psychic damage. From the organ. Oh Just... god, that organ's terrible! Oh my god! Yeah, that was a 23 for damage. But you saved... And because you saved, you do not get stunned. Because you could feel like you could feel like your brain just begin to shut off, and you're like, nope. Start of your turn, you'll have to make that save again. Anything Tell else, Una? Cool. Nope, we cool beans. Alrighty, that'll bring it to Strahd, who's going to touch Bernard on the shoulder, and say, "Hope you're good at flying, just in case he flies in the air." And uh, yep. <coughs> he casts fly on Bernard. So, Bernard, you have 60 feet of flying speed for 10 minutes. Uh, and bonus action, Strahd is going to Misty Step a bit closer. Oh, wait, I can't do that because he didn't get a skin trip. Uh, he is just going to walk up closer, I guess. Full you can use, you can activate that rune I gave you for a bonus action. Maybe he will in a bit. Uh, okay. he's gonna use his full movement <laughs> speed. He's gonna use his, he's gonna, yeah, no, he's gonna use, yeah, 30, yeah, he's gonna use 35 feet of movement and just get in front of the planetar and post up. Shing. Kill. 
And actually, you know what? He'll bonus action activate that thing if he's getting in front of the planetar. Boosh. That means twenty-five he'll be strength. At... Yeah. Uh, that'll end his turn. Bring it to the planetar. <laughs> Woo! And it is going to make two great sword attacks. One on Una. One on Strahd. Just. <laughs> Ooh, the one on Una is a 24 to hit. You just, just hits there. Just, still. just hits? Nice. Just, yeah. Oh. Calculator time. Uh, That's Una, scary. <laughs> you take 21 points of slashing damage. And now uncanny have, dodge sure but now I have to roll the radiant damage which you don't in uncanny dodge if you're dodging the damage from the uh, slash uh, poop alright so you can have the damage from the sword strike is, right? this is going fantastic guys and for the radiant damage You take 14 points of radiant damage. Cool, 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 Just, cool. Psh, and he's going to bring the sword around and hit Strahd. Ooh, ooh. Uh, almost a natural 20 on Strahd, which would have been fun. Uh, that is a 29 to hit Strahd. <laughs> Fuck you, Strahd. Goodbye, uh, wings. <laughs> oh, yeah, he has to do a conservation check uh, on that, if it, depending on. Yeah. Uh, 11, 12, 12 plus 4, 16, 16 plus 7, uh, so that's 23, slashing damage to Strahd, he needs to make a constitution, concentration check for that first, before the Radiant happens, so his DC for concentration is 11. He succeeds, so he still does fly up, but then the radiant damage is going to hit Strahd. Uh, I am bad at math, you guys. I wish monsters had the auto dice Same. on D&D Beyond right now. Uh, Strahd takes 27 radiant damage. And needs to make another concentration check on that for fly, so Bernard can still be flying. Uh, 13 concentration check. Uh oh. Uh, 4 plus his con, which is 4. He got an 8. Unfortunately, <laughs> Fly is gone. <laughs> He's like, ah, oh, fuck. Sorry, Bernard. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll do a bit of my own Fly here in a second. <laughs> uh, and then it'll bring us to Bernard. Whoosh! 40 feet. <laughs> right up on this guy. Yep. <laughs> And, um, uh, what side are you getting on? Are you getting closer to Una or closer to Strahd? Because you guys don't know about the music from the church. I'll either. split the diff. I'll split the difference. That means if if she's behind the planetar and Strahd is in front of the planetar, yep. I will get to its side. All right. Uh, when you get to its side, you do hear the music. I need a wisdom saving throw. Fuck. I'm gonna see you guys. I got seven. Seven. Okay. What's that? There's mu- Ah, oh, there's terrible music. I know! You take it why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> you got a seven? Yeah. Uh, math real quick. You take 14 points of radiant damage, mm -hmm. and because you didn't fail the save by five or more, you're not stunned. You have to fail the save by five or more to get stunned. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yikes. Hold on, actually. Yeah, I probably failed it by over five. I rolled a seven. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, twelve is the DC, so you are stunned, actually. Five or more. Yep. Yeah. What? Shit, that's <laughs> just five, too. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even get a turn. All I did was move. Balls. Fuck. Great. <laughs> oh. Sorry, buddy. No attacks. I have three attacks that were not used. And that only lasts until the start of your next turn. Super. So if someone to slap him, would he get out no, of it? No, because he's still stunned. Stun's a different condition. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You would have advantage on the slap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
All right, so Bernard runs over to the church, and based on his positioning, the church, the like, organ plays music, and Bernard just goes, Duh. Don't come here. <laughs> Bringing it to Ophelia. You kind of just see Bernard kind of go, kind of, like, limp a little bit. As a doctor of the mind, would I be able to recognize that he is stunned? Most likely. Okay, cool. Don't get close to him. <laughs> and everyone's grouped up around him, so I can't just drop a fucking oh, fire. Sorry, Una, because you succeeded, you're actually immune to that organ's effects for 24 hours. I had to double check. One good thing going for us. So, bonus action, wings. Okay. Uh... And right, she's gonna fly up, like about ten feet. Okay. So then, uh, you have twenty-five feet left, mm -hmm. and he's thirty-five feet away. Math, 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 90 feet. That's great. Uh, can I get an intelligence saving throw? I'm gonna just give me mind thrust. Just start it off. Great. Totally. Magic resistance. So he gets advantage on this. Intelligence. Intelligence. Mm -hmm. uh, 15 plus 4 for a 19. Ah, oh, damn it. That just, just saves. But it takes half damage. Hmm. Wait. So it's going to take three psychic damage. Okay. And that's... That's my turn, because I'm not getting any closer. Okay. And since this thing can speak in all languages, it's going to speak in as many... La looking at everyone, it's going to speak as many languages as it can figure out that each of you speak. So in... Primordial, looking at Bernard, he'll just say, What are you doing here? Says the same thing in Dwarvish, says the same thing in Infernal, and says the same thing in Common for Strahd. Uh, and that'll bring it to the top with Una. So I'm just like, I'm still hearing the organ music, but yeah. I, like nothing's happening now. Yeah. Uh, how far is the organ away from me? Uh, 30 feet behind you in the church. Uh, uh, Una is going to just try just to hit the celestial dude with the dagger again. Okay, go for it. 24. 24 hits. You just stab him in the leg. So that will be 10 piercing damage and 11 psychic damage. And you do get sneak attack because Strahd is... Oh, wait. Yes, Strahd. You get sneak attack because Strahd's here. Perfect. Perfect. So that will be six. Thirty nine sneak attack damage. Nice. Anything else? Uh, bonus action disengage, just back up like five feet. <laughs> okay. That'll bring it to Strahd, who is going to... Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, he's just going to go for attacks, I guess, because... Yeah. Two with his sword. Uh, the first one, 18 plus 12 to hit, definitely uh -huh. hits. Uh, that is 11 points of magical slashing damage to this fuckface. Second attack is a natural one, so he just <laughs> gets right off the angelic greatsword. Bringing us to the planetar. And you, you backed up, what, five feet, Una? 
Yeah, I've actually about five okay. feet. Uh, the plantar is going to raise its sword up in the air and bring it slamming down on the ground and cast Flame Strike. Oh boy. A vertical column of divine fire roars down from the heavens around him. Uh, That's a rough one. Ten foot radius, forty foot high cylinder, so I need Bernard, Strahd, and Una to make dexterity saving throws. Bernard, you're stunned, so that is with... Fail. It's an automatic it's fail. Automatic yeah. fail. Okay, Strahd got a 12 plus 4. That's a fail. 23? 23 does succeed, so you take half damage. Can I uh, uncanny dodge that? You can uncanny dodge one of them. <clears throat> okay. Uh, oh, no. Because it's two different types of damage I have to roll. Uh... So, uh, Bernard and uh, Bernard and Strahd both take 19 points of fire damage. Bernard halves that. Okay, so nine. Yep. Uh, so I'll take Una, you take nine. <laughs> if you okay. want one, can you dodge that? No. <laughs> okay, so you take 19 points of fire. Actually, wait, you take half what? of that anyway. You take nine yeah. fire damage. So, yeah. Uh, and because you succeeded, you also take half of this one, which is radiant damage. Uh, and then Strahd and <clears throat> Bernard take 15 points of radiant damage. Una, you take half of that. You take... Ba -ba -ba. Yeah, you take s 7 points of radiant damage. Okay, be cool, be cool, be cool. That's its action. It's then going to use 30 feet of its fly speed and fly straight up, so only Strahd gets an attack of opportunity against it. Because I'm stunned. Grab him. <laughs> uh, that misses. <laughs> Bringing it to Bernard, who is no longer stunned, but because the organ is... Oh, wait, no, the save is at the end of your turn, so you can still do your turn, but if you're staying on the radio... Wait, that doesn't make any sense. Nope. Yeah. Another wisdom saving throw to see if you can break out a stun. Sweet. <laughs> That'll be a bad... Yeah, seven. Again. Right. Still stunned, unfortunately. Great. All right. <laughs> it is rambling, so just be like, use your dab roads. <laughs> and that'll bring us to Ophelia. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, so he's 30 feet up? Yep. Does any move quickly? You can probably estimate this thing has about 120 feet of fly speed. Uh, uh, it's disgusting. Um. I'm gonna fireball him. Okay. Dex. Fireball, thirty feet up in the air. Yeah, he it won't the blast won't hit anybody. So. Yeah. So it can get deck saved. Yep. Uh. Twenty three. Oh, yeah. So he's gonna take half of. Oh, three, nine. Like he dodges the fireball, but it hits the church wall and it explodes outward. It catches him in the back. Fifteen. Fifteen. Eighteen. That's a nice visual, Justin. Eighteen. <laughs> <laughs> Come here to fuck around. Except I maybe did. Uh, half of 28, which would be 6, 14. 14. All right. He's now below tri triple digits. Great. <laughs> Great. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna move. Ten feet. Okay. That'll be my turn. Excellent. That'll bring us to Una again. Things thirty feet up in the goddamn air. Yep. Okay. 
and you went in basically if you went back five feet you'd be in the church so he actually has complete cover from your view you can't see him from where you are how far do you think the organ is from me now uh, 30 you, moved, feet? you moved back five, five feet so it's 30 feet away I am going to uh, bonus action do the Uvar rune. Okay. So uh, you are another creature you can see within 60 feet makes an attack roll saving throw ability check. I can give them advantage. With a reaction, yeah. 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 With a reaction. Do that. So, I'm going to run into the church and stab at the organ with that dagger. Okay, make just, an just all right. Make an attack roll. That visual. You don't get sneak attack because it's not a creature, obviously. Uh, yeah, obviously. And there's no one. Yeah, but yeah. He's just like fuck the arts. <laughs> You're starting to sound like my high school now. Oof. Yeah, oof. <laughs> Oh. 26. 26 hits. You stab the dagger into, like, the mechanisms of the organ. Roll damage. Okay, so that's going to be... Nine piercing. Okay, and because it's a construct, it's an object, it's immune yeah. to poison and psychic damage. Yeah. Objects can't take psychic damage, so it just takes nine piercing damage. Has it? Is it still playing music? Oh, yeah. It's still intact. Your it's still playing music. music. <laughs> uh, God dang it. But he did damage um, to it. Not a lot of damage, but it did something. Um, um, can I do anything else? No, I guess that's my action. Yeah. Uh, and you used... Yeah, you would have used 30 movement to get to the organ. Yeah. And you bonus action, I believe, dash? No, you didn't. Uvar. So, yeah, you bonus action Uvar. Uvar, so you don't have any bonus actions either. But I, on each of your turns after this, throughout pretty much this entire combat, you can use your reaction whenever to give or to give uh, advantage or disadvantage on a roll. On creatures you can see, right? Yeah. So right now that'd be based on the angling strad. Okay, hmm. hey, uh, she is just getting ready to just this organ up because she's like it's hurting Bernard this is bad okay. <laughs> maybe it's connected to the celestial thing Strahd's just out of the radius and he's like why are you attacking the organ and he sees Bernard kind of like oh he's like oh okay uh hold on I think I can do something and he's gonna aim a fireball just out of range of your head and hit it hit the top pipes of the organ because the organ is considered a huge object and he's going to cast Fireball, which it's an object automatically fails. And it's action now, and the organ takes 30 points of fire damage. The organ stops playing music. Bernard, you are no longer stunned. <sighs> the organ's been destroyed. It just, Fireball hits it. Udin just yells up, Thank you! Yes, no problem. Uh, fuck, that's my turn. Bringing it to the planetar who is up in the air. Who is going to. Bitch on the tank. Yeah, it's gonna fly towards Ophelia. 30 feet up in the air, it's gonna fly towards Ophelia. It has 120 feet of fly speed. And it's just gonna zoom towards Ophelia and with its momentum, go for the first uh, greatsword attack on Ophelia. Fuck. Damn, you really about to rock my shit. Natural 20. That's a crit. Just flies forward and just boom into Ophelia's. Yeah, you can't see that guy, so you can't do the bonus. You can't do the reaction to disadvantage, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, that's gross. And that's a crit for the slashing on the radiant. Uh, Ooh. All right, Ophelia, you take 37 slashing damage. Just shh. Uh, and for the Radiant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ophelia, you take 
36 points of radiant damage. Oh, <laughs> crit nasty. Uh, well. So that's the first one, just boom! Bernard, you like turn as the thing flat rockets towards the field, and you see that big hit. Just, and you see blood, like from the impact of that great sword, spray the trees, trees nearby. And then it's going to bring the sword down on top of Ophelia's head for the second attack. For a... 22 to hit. 10 plus 12. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Just... And then... uh, Oh, I rolled so good. I'm so sorry. Twenty-seven slashing damage. I'm out. <laughs> and as you're falling, the radiant damage is still too. But it's all considered the same attack, so it's not considered an automatic death fail. But you do fall, so you you will take a death save <laughs> fail from falling. Uh, that's yeah. damage here. Uh, it out. And for the radiant damage, that's twenty radiant damage. Ouch. Plus, you're falling and you hit the ground. This is all counting if it hit. If this, yeah, you don't want. Hopefully, this doesn't exceed your max hit points or Ophelia's gone. Uh, for blood yeah. damage, because you're how far up? You were ten feet up, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, sorry, I rolled. Yeah, you take three bludgeoning damage, and you take one failed death save from you hitting the ground. Just, oh. and then the plantar is gonna turn in the air because it still has movement speed left. And it's gonna fly back to the group and hover above you guys. How high? How high up? Thirty feet. Oh. Cool. And that'll bring us to Bernard. Bernard says, "Fuck that." He's heading to Ophelia, okay. giving she her is, a potion of greater healing. Thirty-five feet away. That's great. I have a forty-foot mm-hmm. move speed. I'm running up to her, giving her the forty-four plus four. Okay. Four. So as you, in four D four. Yes. So use your action Plus to pour four. the potion in her mouth. Yeah. Uh, I guess... Sadly, that's only 13 hit points. Okay. So if hey. you come to consciousness, 13 hit points, prone on the ground, Bernard pouring a potion in your mouth. That's my movement and action. Correct. Um, so... Did it look like this thing was doing any physical damage when it attacked? Totally. Okay. Uh, then I will... Uh, I'll bonus action uh, Halgrun. Because I haven't gotten to do anything yet. This is like the first round of combat for me. Uh, so I'm going to do that. Bonus action, Halgrim. Okay. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, I still can't. I'm not able to get to him either. Nope. Um. Yeah, I got nothing. Uh. Ooh, um. Shit. Yeah. Fine. I got nothing. Okay. That'll bring it to Ophelia, who's prone with some hit points. Would've been really bad if you rolled a natural one if you were still unconscious. <laughs> Ow. But yes, you're conscious with 13 hit points. That thing rocketed towards you and just swish, swish. you fell from the sky and now Bernard, yeah, standing in front of you. You're like <laughs> conscious. Uh, I hate this. Yeah, that wasn't good. And just remember, Ophelia, for attack rolls and saving throws, you have a D4 because of Bless. That's great. I haven't had to do any of those yet. Yeah. <sighs> you don't you don't even have any spells that give you that you have an attack roll, right? Fire, fire <laughs> so, one. Yeah. Or whatever. And also that, that bless also counts for death saving throws for you. Oh. Yeah. Great. Because it's a saving throw. Real handy. Real handy. Yeah. Um okay. Half movement to stand up. Correct. And your wings are gone because you were incapacitated. Yeah. How far is the big boy from us? 35 feet away, 30 feet in the air. I'm a fireball again. Okay. 
Do you just fuck this? <laughs> All right. All right. No, I don't I just imagine there's like a little bit of that potion still <laughs> dripping out of the side of your mouth, and you're just like, "Fuck this guy." With, <laughs> with advantage because of magical resistance, he only got a 15. Woo, baby! So he's kind of That's gloating. Just... He's gloating about what he just did to you, and then opens his eyes from his laugh, and the fireball just because <laughs> he doesn't really he doesn't notice you getting back up, and just as he like goes back to paying attention, the fireball just boom into his chest. Great, we love this. Una, you hear an explosion of fire just just outside the church doors. Just poof, straws like, oh fuck! <laughs> what the hell are you doing? And this thing does not appear resistant to fire damage when you've been hitting it with the fire stuff. Oh. Does not appear resistant. Does not appear resistant. Well, well, I don't have any bonus. I don't want to fly again. What was the damage? We're just twenty-six. Oh, I didn't hear that. Okay, cool. So he's looking bad. He's like, <laughs> he spoke to me in Inferno, so I feel like he's gonna respond in Inferno, not knowing if he can understand. Just to get fucked. Yeah, uh, planetars can understand all language. <laughs> So he just hears his tiny little teeth like sure. that. Get fucked. <laughs> his eyes just go right to you. Yeah, oh, good thing Bernard's. Boy. Good thing she's looking around like on, from the other side of Bernard. He's posting <laughs> up. Just like Shield peeking out from behind arm. him. Just get fucked. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> dip right back behind him. Sure. Uh, that'll bring it to Una. I uh, let's I am going to run out of the church. Okay, that's thirty five feet of movement to get out of the church. And just looking at this display of like what like there's like fire, she's like The church is kind of on fire because it's a building, so it's like like what did I miss? And she, the things like thirty something feet yeah, up. Yeah, thirty so... feet. There's no way I can jump at it. Even attempt. No it. way, you're a dwarf. Like there's no, like there's no goddamn <laughs> no. way. Daggers no. can be thrown though. True. <laughs> but you would not feel compelled to throw this dagger because based on the curse <laughs> it has, you never want it to leave yeah. your person. I'd be like, no. Yeah. So she's gonna. She will chuck like the non pretty, like, just like a non pretty dagger towards like, it. Just a standard dagger? Just a standard dagger. Just a Cool. <laughs> At this big non old pretty. angel dude. Sure. You just huck a big. Yeah, roll. Make an attack roll. <laughs> it's like, it's just a prison shiv. <laughs> just like Ugh. a sharpened spoon. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm at 20! Nat 20? So roll all your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but it's resistant to non-magical weapons, so whatever you roll, just cut it this in is, half. This yeah. is fine. Let's see. So roll damage, <laughs> multiply it, Oof. add the modifier. He dies from prison. So it's rolled damage. and then times two. So yes. times two you roll. And then you add so... the modifier. And then you multiply sneak attack because you're still within... Actually, no, no sneak attack because it's 35, 30 feet in the air. You're technically not using a ranged weapon, you're using a dagger, so... Wait! No, you do get sneak attack on that. But she oh, doesn't wait. have advantage. Right, and if no she one's doesn't have advantage, feet. no one's within five feet. No Never mind. Feet. Yeah, so just the dagger attack, and then multiply it. So that would be... And then I'll have it. <laughs> if it kills him, that'd so be that'd funny. Be There's no way. 12 piercing, Oof. so... 6 piercing. piercing. <laughs> totally out of spite. Just, just, just. <laughs> okay. Hey, ass hat, basically. Okay. Get fucked. Anything else? Action, uh, movement. Yeah, yeah, that's that's your turn. Cool. Is the dagger in him, or did it like tink off? Based on the damage, it kind of just slashed him, then fell to the ground. Okay. Uh, that'll bring us to Strahd, who is going to be like, "What the fuck is happening?" 
Uh. Okay. Everyone okay over there? No. Okay. Kill it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Divine justice, bitch. He is going to look up at this asshole and just cast a fourth level fireball. Just. Yeah, keep it going. From below. Love to see it. Love to see it. Uh, so this thing needs to make a deck save <laughs> with advantage. That's a natural 20 for advantage. But, but that was a fourth level fireball, so that's 96 fire damage. Reduced to half. That's 35 fire damage reduced to half. So this thing takes 17 points of fire damage. It's looking real rough. And that church is just burning now. Just engulfed in flames, essentially. Uh, to see it. And then that's Straw's turn. Uh, bring it to the Planetar, who's going to drop back on the ground in front of Una and Straw. Just... And one attack on Una. Oh, that's a uh, for a calculator time. It probably hits. Uh, 30 to hit. You know, just, just hits. Yeah, just okay. hits. So he just drops to the ground, slams the sword into you. He doesn't even use, well, he does use the blade, but. Uh, yeah. You take 21 slashing damage, just shh. Oh, then can he dodge that? Totally. Totally. And you take... 14 radiant damage. Oh, I forgot to add a d8, sorry. Oh. <laughs> 15 radiant damage. Okay. How's Una looking? Because he wants to figure out who he's going to attack next. <laughs> Define how Una's looking. <laughs> Bad, good. I could take another hit. If that's cool. what he's, he's trying to do. He's going to swing around and hit Strahd in the face <laughs> with the sword then. Is he looking or just like, No, bam. just like, <laughs> uh, and then hit Strahd. That's a 4 plus 12. Yeah. So just, <laughs> Strahd's like, oh, you see the sword? Smash Strahd in the face. Um, <laughs> Just blunt end, but it still does crazy slashing. damage. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 19 slashing damage to Strahd. <laughs> and then 5d8 radiant damage. Gee oh, whiz. Jesus. <laughs> Damn. Testing family. And he takes 21 radiant damage, and Strahd's not looking so shit hot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, bringing like it to, to Mr. Bernard Bunsen. Go get him. Uh, go get him. Bernard is, you'll see him kind of like dig his, his foot into the ground. Totally. Uh, to get like, uh, you know, like you're about to take off running. Naruto runs. He's just going to like, <laughs> uh, and he's going to run straight at this guy mm -hmm. uh, and do a grapple. But before he does so, as he's running, he's going to bonus action. You get large. Okay. Yeah, so you're both large yeah. creatures. Yeah. Uh, giant's might. Okay. Uh, and yeah, so... Um, yeah. Gonna do a grapple. 16. Uh, 19. So you lunge grapple. or grapple this guy. Second one. I'm going to try and restrain. So same thing. That's good. I think that succeeds. Uh, 25. 27. Okay, so just... <laughs> <laughs> so, visual of what just happened. Bernard straight up... Uh, <laughs> Goldberg's oh, this, this guy's is, ass. This is considered a magical effect, so he gets advantage on the restraint. What? No, it's not. Yes, it is. That's not a magical effect. It's te technically is because you're conjuring magical fiery chains. No, that no. I'm I am grappling him. I'm restraining him with oh, a grapple. Oh, I thought you were doing the sorry. I thought no. you were doing the fire one. No, nope. Okay. I am physically miting him. I just did a Goldberg wrestling move spear and tackled him to the ground. <laughs> well, not, well, visually, I'm just yeah. like he's not prone. I'm just saying like, wow. That's how I'm. That's how I'm explaining this. Anyway, the uh, mfer is restrained. <laughs> okay. We were just watching this happen, like literally right in front of her, and she's just like, "I." Yeah, he's in the background, like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, 
I have advantage on creatures that have grappled, but because I did a uh, pin, we are both restrained, so it's just a flat roll for my third attack. Fuck him up! Fuck him up, Bernard! Which is a 24 to hit. 24 hits. Okay. Yeah! And that is... 13 plus... 2. 15 total damage Still for that standing. attack. Like, he's looking real but, bad. But he's not going anywhere. Unless he's got, you know, that bullshit that everybody has. Big, old, <laughs> big angel. Yeah. CR sixteen angel, so who knows? Yeah. What? <laughs> uh, so that's my bonus action, all of my attacks and movement. Okay. Yeah, CR sixteen. You guys are level fifteen. Straws level sixteen. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Let's do it. <laughs> Ophelia, it's your turn. How? Ooh. How bad is he looking? Like real, real bad. Pretty bad. bad. Yeah. Ooh. Who's looking worse, him or Straw, though? Oh, good question. Uh. Yeah, like the planetar. Oh, based on hit points though, if you want to go based on hit points, like total <laughs> max HP at the beginning, this guy. The planet. Ooh. This guy starts with max two hundred. Um. Yeah. But just so you guys know, you would have advantage on all attacks on this guy now, since he's restrained. Yep. Yeah, but I don't attack. My you dear. could attack. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna come in with my yeah. one point of damage. Hell no, I mean, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, spells, attack spells. Spe attack spells would be with, with advantage as well. I don't have attack spells. I have saving throw spells. Oh, and he's got advantage on saving throws against spells and magical effects. I'm a fire. Careful spell. Careful spell to protect everybody else but him. I'm a fire. So, they, but they still take half damage. Mm -hmm, yeah. So Strahd, Stra Una, Stra be fucking dead. Strahd, <laughs> Una, and Bernard will take half fire damage. You're gonna yeah. kill Bernard? You're gonna, you're gonna kill no, Strahd? No, be fine. But... Okay, so roll the damage. I... Oh, wait, hold on. He has to make a dex save with... Yeah. Disadvantage. I have he's... I, can't, I can never remember points. restraint if it's disadvantage on dex checks. Uh, I believe it is. I have it written down right here. Oh. All of the uh, stuff for it. Restrained. Yeah, disadvantage on dexterity, which means... Well, yeah. she's making Bernard and everyone else succeed, but they still take damage. Uh, with disadvantage, that's a natural one. <laughs> In sick. Strahd might Bye. die. <laughs> no. <laughs> 24. Okay. 24 damage. 24 damage in total. This thing is still okay. standing. Can I uncanny dodge 12. that? Yeah. Uh, oh. Yes. Okay, Strahd good. is sitting at 11 hit points. Just what the fuck was that? Yeah, whatever. So that's 12 for those of us that succeeded? Correct. Yes. So 6 for me. Yep. Yes. Okay. 12 for Una. Oh, sorry. Strahd would get 12 as well. I gave Strahd the full amount. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Strahd takes 12 fire damage. He's still like, what the fuck, Ophelia? Just come up here uh, and punch the thing in the testicles. How do you know it has testicles, <laughs> Strahd? Are you fucking angels in your spare time? Oh. Obviously. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, anything? Anything else, Ophelia? Maybe that's fireball was on purpose. I'm just wrong. Anything else? <laughs> no. Okay, that brings us to Una. She is just fuck this guy. Magic. Oh, no, wait, never mind. Never mind. I fucked up. Never mind. I'm. I'm she right. She is I'm right. going to run and well, not really run because it's right there and just. Take that dagger with soul scary and just whoosh. With advantage because he is restrained, so you get sneak attack as well. Oh bless. So natural that one natural be... one you stab Bernard. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to get a double nat one. Yeah. <laughs> Twenty seven. Hit. Roll damage. Bernard yeah, essentially Bernard sees you Bernard going to stab him <laughs> and he like kinda opens it up. <laughs> So that will be 11 piercing damage. How do you want to do this? <laughs> four, hit, four hit points. Are you fucking <laughs> Yeah, baby. Also, she... when, you're, when you kill this asshole, you can add another charge to that dagger. <laughs> but yeah, how do you do this? How do you want to do this? 
Um, Una, it does it have horns on its head, you said? It does not have horns. I'll show you what a planetar looks like. Because it's fair to show people what their fighting looks like. Uh, oh, yeah, I'll have to post it in the Zoom chat. Big ol' angel. But he looks different. He's, like, corrupted looking, and he his wings don't have any feathers. His wings are skeletal. Oh, damn. Kind of hot, though. Never right? Mind. She is going to, like, with the dagger, mm -hmm. like, break off one of the bones and, like... You're cutting off one of the wings. Because, like, the one of the wings, like, it had, like, it was, like, made out of bones, right? Yeah. So she's gonna, like, take one of the bones in, okay. like, one hand and the dagger in the other and just sink it through both of its eyes. Oh. Alright, so because you're a dwarf, I'll say you get some leverage off of Bernard. Bernard just kind of wiggles and in And as down. you're jumping into the air, you slice off one of the bones and then just slam dagger and bone into its eyes. And as you slam into it, like, impale its eyeballs... Um, radiant light starts to emanate from its eyes and from its mouth and it just says thank you and as it explodes in radiant light everyone up close heals max to their max hit points and you all and that's just a homebrew thing because fuck it it's my game <laughs> uh, and you guys all appear back in the prison cell and one of the but Ophelia one of the, didn't heal right oh fuck <laughs> correct because you weren't close enough so Tight. Uh, the chain attaching to one of the you guys have reappear. Pff, one of the chains attaching to Kazan tsh, shatters. Now it's not the benefits of a long rest. You just re go back to your max hit points. So that's Strahd, Bernard, and Una. They go back to max. And Strahd's gonna walk over to Ophelia and he's like, "Are you okay, Ophelia? I don't want to heal you because of that fireball, but." Oh my God! You can let him go. <laughs> <laughs> and he just hands you a potion of supreme healing. Drink it. Just gonna look him straight in the eye. Mm -hmm. And cast heal on herself. <laughs> oh. Okay, I'll keep this then. And he walks, turns around and... Didn't want you wasting a spell slot, but okay. Oh boy. I'm so good for spells, everyone. Let's yeah, go, guys. Uh, we can do this. And you, you see Una just like... Now? So, this next one's gonna be a bit worse, I think. Because, I mean, this thing flies as well, and... Probably. I mean, if it is a red dragon, it's gonna be flying as well. So I'll, cast, I'll, I'll, cast, I'll cast fly on as many people as I can, so that's just Una then and Bernard. Back. Just make sure you don't get hit. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, at, least I, at least I didn't get <laughs> stunned by an instrument. I know, right? That's pretty, that's a bonehead move right there. Uh, so, fun fact, you guys just killed a planetar called Asmodran, and that location was called the Bright Keep. And, yeah, Ophelia, you no longer have that blessed benefit. Because you're when, no longer there. When Una, like, stabbed it and died, and, like, all the energy came out, would she would have had enough time to conjure a soul trinket or no? Nah? Sure. What does it look like? Uh, I actually had to look into that because the celestials are a little different. I it was just like so a. It'd be like uh, a feather. Yeah. No, I have to like look into like the the, oh. the rules. Oh, it's actually like official stuff. Okay. The creature. I, I thought it was all flavor. Nope. <laughs> this is the phantom cool. rogue, which the revive turn into. Sure, yeah, you can do it. I will pull up the trinket table. From Curse of Strahd, because that makes sense. Based on, because these are go technically gothic trinkets, okay. Uh, Alright, so you're doing that? Yeah. Roll me a d100, please, so percentile dice. Okay, that is going to be... 68. 68. So yeah, as you reappear in the prison cell, the dagger does get ticked off another charge. Uh, and then you also conjure a god of trinket in your hand, which appears as a walking cane with an iron feather rule that strikes sparks on stone. It's like a sparking kind of walking cane. Bloodborne stuff. Una. Like a Bloodborne-esque cane that just goes Tush. Una's gonna get near Bernard and just start making sparks next to him. 
So that's very neat. Um, right? Wait, wait, where did you get that? Uh, from our, uh, our, our friend that we just, uh, fought. Where was he hiding that? Wait, don't tell me. Don't, don't tell me. I don't know, Astronaut probably in his testicles with everything else. That doesn't make any sense. You're the one who brought up angel testicles, Astronaut. Uh, tes I don't know what you do okay. You can't your store time. things in testicles. Yeah, Uda, Uda, how old are you? Testicles don't look, don't work like that. Yeah, it's not like a briefcase that we carry around. You're not supposed to ask a lady her age, Bernard. I don't call it my bag of holding. <laughs> oh, dang. <laughs> you sit in the corner like, Because <laughs> Anne's like, I would appreciate it if you didn't talk about nudity and genitals while I'm like this. That was quite insensitive, guys. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. Oh look, one chain left on my body, one chain left, one veil left. Yeah, hey, buddy, now that we're getting close, um, yeah. how, uh, how you doing? I have a chain in my thigh. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, but, I mean, look at, and he's gonna, like, look at, uh, like, the little holes, I guess, stretched yeah, still skin, gaping, maybe? yeah. Yeah. I mean, how, how's that going? What? How do you think it feels? Uh, it looks like it. it hurts like hell. It doesn't hurt. It's just uncomfortable because I can feel the air moving through the open holes in my body. Ooh. Ugh. Boy, that usually stings. Mm -hmm. Got your own built-in air conditioner. It's not too bad. I don't have to worry about that. Well, um, now at least you can walk around a little bit, right? Uh, you can move around. You can do other not stuff. Not really. The chain's still taut in my other thigh, so I can't exactly move around yet. But you can move towards where the chain is connected, right? No. It's kind of like in his thigh meat, directly into the ground below him, so he can't exactly move himself around that much. It's, it's taut. Like, oh. There's no, has no slack. Movement. Okay. Yeah, there's no slack to it whatsoever. Okay. But, but I can, he can lay on the floor. The dragon. <laughs> Uh, he doesn't have to be standing anymore. He could just, like, oh, lay on the floor. <laughs> you know, I think I'll stand because I can finally stretch my leg out. And he starts to stretch out his other leg. Oh, nice. I love it. I love the idea of this <laughs> This guy just doing calisthenics, stretching and out he, after, like, hundreds nude. of years. He's stretching out while <laughs> nude. So yeah, all right, who's ready to fight the dragon? Let's, let's You're seeing let's really unflattering man. angles from this old man who's a corpse. <laughs> who's, like, undead as well. He's just like, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, wait, like, all right, that's enough for me to dragon. see. Yeah, that's enough. I'd rather see a, dra I'd rather uh, see a dragon. All right, yeah, so let's, we need to... Uh, all right, let's go. Whew. All right, you're all going through the next veil. Yeah. Yep. Who's going in first? Does anybody need a short rest before then? No, I don't personally. No, let's, okay. Yeah, Luckily, let's I also did not use a whole bunch of stuff. Oh, yeah. by, the, okay. by this time, Straw's strength score would go back to. Yeah. Based on everything, would go back to twenty-three. Twenty-three. He has another. Oh no! Of Only twenty-three. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh, oh, I feel so weak. <laughs> Whoa, yeah. you, see, you see him just kind of like <laughs> just a little hardly any difference oh uh, yeah, yeah so who's going through this who's going through this next veil first una will go first again una as soon as you step through it's really fucking hot oh strata will go next it's like a dry heat or like a humid heat dry as fuck hot like scalding Ooh. Mm, all right. Is there a like? Is there a sun? Nope. Or is it just like hot? I'll get to okay. that when everybody else arrives. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. You all are standing in the interior of a volcano. Well, you can hear the sound of lava bubbling below, and you're on a ten foot wide stone bridge. Basically, the bridge has caused a doom from Lord of the Rings. It's about ten feet wide, and it spans about sixty feet into a dark tunnel. And it is hot as fuck in here. So just for the sake of rules and everything, um, based on this area, uh, every hour you guys are here, you have to make a constitution saving throw or gain one level of exhaustion. The DC is 5 for the first hour and cr increases every hour. Oh, sorry. The DC is 10 and increases every hour you're here. Uh, creatures also wearing medium armor or heavy armor or clad in heavy clothing have disadvantage on that saving throw. But... 
The only people making this saving throw are Una and Strahd, because Ophelia and Bernard have fire resistance. Hell yeah, baby. So this place <laughs> it's is just like, wow. The fire, like the heat exhaustion is not going to bother Ophelia or Bernard. The lava might if someone falls into it, but the heat exhaustion it only, <laughs> is only going to affect Una and Strahd, so only the two of them are feeling it. Oh, it's like, oh, real this nice is, here. This is disgusting. It's really nice. I'm wearing here. wolves. He has like a wolf, like a wolf for Oof. like cloak. Yeah, He's wolf. like, oh. Then put it in your bag. No, I still have <laughs> armor on. I'm not taking off. It's useless. There's no point to me spending all this time to take off my armor and becoming a squishy little boy. No. But yeah, at I don't least know, it Ivy. will be a passing out boy. But I'll die if I get hit by something, most likely. Deal yeah, welcome to the club. I'll deal with the heat <laughs> exhaustion. All right. Well, uh, looks like we got a path here, but um, I don't want anybody to fall down lava. That looks real dangerous. Yeah, how far down is it? He looks over. Anyone else want to join me looking over? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> yeah, man, man. Uh, no. it, it looks like <laughs> it's a... Uh, a hundred and fifty foot drop into the lava lake down below. Look at down, Shrek. <laughs> look at down. <laughs> Don't look down. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, that's a it smells like brimstone. Well, I don't know. Uh, how long does that fly work? Ten minutes. I mean, we could try using that fly and then try to get there. I think on quicker. Wind. Maybe when, oh. we get to the dr right, when we're getting close to what looks like a dragon horde, maybe? Alright, well, you know, just try and stay within touching distance of all of us while we cross, cross this, like, you know, crazy, dangerous looking bridge, you maybe. You probably tell that to Una as well. You know I'm Una? I was right going, here, I was going to cast. I was going to cast fly on you and Bernard in that angel fight, but you ran away, so. Well, because that organ was giving him Careful, some Careful, Una, secret. it's a long way down. Are you threatening No, her? I am making an no. observation. Yeah, it wouldn't be the first time, wouldn't be the last time with Straw. But and I, and I imagine, so the funny thing about your little curse is you probably wouldn't reappear with these people up here. You would just constantly keep, like, getting a new body in the lava, and that body burns away, and then another one, you know? Well, so you probably don't want to fall in. body. Yeah, I wasn't planning on taking a nice hot lava bath, Straw. Well, I have... A couple of brain cells left after all these. As uh... you guys are talking, though, <laughs> uh, you see through the doorway on the other side of the corridor something coming, like walking out along the bridge, kind of minding its own business. And it's about 20 feet tall, wearing black plate armor and carrying a huge great sword on its back, just looking around. It's got like darkish, grayish brown skin and flaming red hair. It is a fire giant. God, Bernard would definitely know those. <laughs> and it looks around, and it sees you all, waves, and then turns around and walks back into the cave. Bernard will say a giant, Hello, nice to meet you. <laughs> Hi. And then just leaves. So I was like, that is weird. Fire giants are usually hostile. Ah, Not to well. this face. Who could be hostile to this face? I'm just, just gonna point to. Bernard. I was. Yeah. Well, that's because you're a jerk. <laughs> yeah. Well, look out, Bernard. Look out. <laughs> I'll punch you in the dick. <laughs> I think. We All right. Get well. Yeah. Let's go figure out what's going on with that so, guy. He yeah. gave to us. Let's see if he's got the info on what's going on. Ten foot wide bridge. Just so you guys know. No railings or anything, it's just made of stone, so one slip and... <laughs> wow, Opposite. OSHA really needs to get out here. <laughs> this is an OSHA violation of ours. Right. <laughs> Everybody, uh, stay close. Let's let's see if we can... Cro Sorry, let's see if we can cross this thing. The heat, kind of relaxing, making me a it's, bit yawny. It's awful. It's not relaxing in this way. Oh, man, Hard, hard wake up. Oh. You know, just like smacks him on the arm, like, come on, my you muscles, gotta stay awake, stay limber. My muscles, they're so, like, it's like I'm getting a massage. Uh, you guys are walking across the just bridge. Just removes all the tension. Oh. Uh, and you eventually, <laughs> you eventually get to that doorway, and that giant is nowhere to be seen. Ah, oh, dang. I was like, well, the first time I came in contact with a giant, he was super aggressive. So this was like the first time I had a chance to actually, you know, really exercise. Oh, 
giant knowledge I got. Oh, wow. Man, let's see if we can find it. Ophelia does a 23 hit. Uh, yeah. Okay, so you hear, hi, in giant. Do everyone understand giant? <laughs> and the giant picks up Ophelia and goes to give her a hug. Uh, hi, are you here to save me and my friends? And it's all in giant. It's only Bernard and... I, I can hear it. Strahd can understand it. Strahd, Una, Una speaks yeah, giant Strahd, too. Strahd, Una, yeah. and Bernard. He's a friend. He's a friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're here to, uh, like, take out some some real mean jerk. Oh. He looks at Ophelia. Pretty. And sets her down. Yes, she is very pretty, but very, very dainty. This is all really doesn't know what the fuck's yeah. going on. Da like... What is dainty? Fragile. He says Fragile. She's, she's squishy. She, she fragile squishy. Yeah. Oh. Why is he pointing at me? He said he's he's telling us how pretty you are. Aww. Thank you. And he kind of like he makes like a hand motion of somebody walking and then <laughs> fragile. And yes. Yeah. Fragile. Is he threatening me? Nope. Nope, he's just, he's, he was concerned about, uh, you maybe be getting, getting squished. Okay. He takes a big finger and pats Ophelia on top of the head, just pat, pat, pat. <laughs> friend? <laughs> friend. Yeah, hey, my name is Bernard, this is Ophelia, this is Una and Strahd, what's your name? I, uh, I don't remember. Oh, shucks. Yeah, cause this. And you see, he's got a huge dragon fang embedded just behind his his right ear. And you can probably assume he might have been a smart, dangerous giant, but that might be messing with him a little bit. All about me. Oh shit. Yeah, yeah. This people call me Fang, but that's I don't think that's my name. Can, I, can any of you guys help him? Uh, I think if we remove that fang, he might become hostile again and not afraid. Oh. Just oh. leave it, Bernard. It's fine. Gosh. Well, it seems. Estrada's going to speak in giant. Uh, does it hurt? He points to this. No. Just tickles my dream box when I sleep sometimes. Well, this guy's adorable. Well, we want to help you out. Uh, we're kind of inclined to think that there might be a big guy with wigs around here that's just yeah, super mean. Yeah, yeah, the Earth Flame, the dragon who took over my family's home. Oh, yeah. Uh, does it, what do you know about this guy? Dragon, fly, red, big. Do you, do you know if he's sleeping or when he might be sleeping? Not sleeping, eating. No. Oh. What's he eating? Family. That's right, bud. I'm supposed to be on the menu tonight. I don't know what a menu is, but that's what I heard people saying. Well, as long as you uh, you stick with us, we can uh, we can help you out. Oh, no, me stay here. This is my... Oh, I, I stay here. I play. Okay. Until dinner time. Alright, well, I mean... Gosh, guys, I don't know what you want to do. You get me out of here? Yeah. Okay. Do you want... Do you want to leave? Yeah. <laughs> if Ophelia's doing that, you'll see Bernard start to like tear up. <laughs> um, and as you're all like standing here t talking to this giant, you guys hear what sounds like a large bell being rung throughout the entirety of the cave system, this volcano, and he goes, "Oh, dinner," and he starts just wandering off down the tunnel. No, no. 
Okay, we gotta follow him. <laughs> Bernard's going to uh, communicate as much of what what just transpired in the conversation to Ophelia. Yeah, I think we I think we should. Yeah, well, let's go. So I have an idea, actually. Yeah, what's that? So, I doubt the giants are gonna want to fight the dragon. For us, that's fine. But if he is within proximity of us as we kill the dragon and we get teleported out, maybe we could grab him and bring him with us. And then we could have an ally in Ravenloft that's a fire giant. Yeah. We could just like the way you think. We could just never pull that. Maybe. Maybe he's not a mean giant anyway. But. Or, you know, if he. I mean, I imagine he would remember. And yeah. I mean, giants even are if you're. Smart. Even if you're. I mean, even if you are a little evil, like, remembering mm. that someone is useful and helps totally. you out, they might still and, yeah. use logic. And it's kind of wrong to think just because he's a fighter giant, he might be evil. I yeah, mean, they definitely have a temper. Yeah. yeah. So. Just like how not all vampires are evil. There was this one vampire called Florian, he wasn't evil. Well, no, all the that's a story I've met for have been evil. So. Yeah, not all vampires are evil. There's a ton that are. I have not met them. They're, they've been dealt a terrible hand. I imagine this is at like a, uh, a kind of slight jogging pace in order to keep up with this <laughs> giant. And he's just like, yeah, the giant's just walking, looking around. He doesn't understand what dinner time means or what menu. He doesn't understand that he's about to be eaten. Um. And he's walking ahead, and you guys see this massive, like, large iron cage that has four giants in it already. And they're like, like, but they're like children. And he goes, this is where I stop. And he opens the cage. I see you, friend, soon. Um. Yes. Yes. Um. Yes. Okay. We will be back. And you notice the gate actually doesn't have any keys on it or locks. You just get the giants are so, like, uh, beaten down by this dragon. They're too scared to rise up against it. Um, so he just goes in the cage. Giant and... Skinner's box. Oh. So he just sits in the box and goes, he looks at the other little kid giants. Hi, I'm friend. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, and in front of you guys, you see these two large stone doors made of volcanic rock. And on both the doors is carved into the visage of a red dragon. And he just goes, yeah, dinner time's in there if you guys are hungry. <laughs> so while while he, whenever he speaks, Bernard is taken to using his produce flame cantrip to kind of do subtitles for him so okay. that Ophelia knows what he's okay. speaking. Thank you. <laughs> oh, pretty. Yeah, we, we nailed it. He, We're gonna like, help you out, he picks okay? Up, he picks up like a big bone from something and starts like picking his nose with it. That's okay. precious. It is quite precious. Well, we better do some recon and figure out how we're gonna do this. Dragon lives in there. Dragon's home. Dragon's den in there. Food time. Do you know how old the dragon is? Uh. No, I don't know numbers. Is it a little kid? Is no. it like a mom dragon? Uh, adult? <laughs> All mm. right. Well, um, are there any... Do you is know there what a... she doesn't like? Everything. No. Everything, Una. Dragons don't like anything. Um, are there any other entrances to the room? No. No? Okay. Shoot. Okay. It's gonna see us coming, yeah. so that means we might have to we might have to present something as an oh, offering. Oh fuck! I have a really bad idea. What's we can that? present him. I could polymorph some people into rats, and we can kind of sneak into the room under the door. Maybe is there anything? Uh, uh, do you have anything in your memory that might be more resistant to fire that might not look as out of place? Not for beasts. Oof. What about lizards? Not, try lizards? For, not, not in Barovia. Oh, dang. I have an idea, though. This could go really badly. Oh, I am scared. We're a testing family. It's fine, Shrog. Ugh. Oh, we're a testing family. Oh, never mind. I don't have this guy self-prepared today. Nope. Oh. 
Shucks. Uh, fuck. And the doors start to <laughs> go. They're starting to slowly grinding open inwards. So, uh, Justin, just to kind of gauge the scenario a bit here, mm -hmm. we were just told that there was a bell and that it was feeding time, correct? Yeah. yeah. And he went back to his thing. So he's preparing, essentially putting himself on a dish to be eaten by going into this cage. Yeah. We are hanging out like pretty much in the kitchen <laughs> where mm -hmm. the uh, where the uh, waitress would come by and pick up the food to deliver. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so knowing that, uh, what? How do we want to group? How do we want to uh, proceed with this? And the doors are slowly grinding open inwards. I've never fought a dragon before, just so you know. No, I say I have. I killed one in Barovia. Uh, last time I fought one didn't go so great for me. Yeah, the last the last two dragons we fought didn't go so well. Oh, you fought another dra You fought dragons before. Well, yeah, now, we fought, now's not the time we fought to discuss one. that, I don't think. We fought one at a tower, and we fought one oh, that was the a one shadow. Oh, the one at the tower, the, the magical one. Yeah, that's a, that's a yeah. young blue dragon. Yeah, we, yeah, we kind of got hosed by that one. Oh, well, you're, probably, you're probably stronger now than you were then. Uh, yeah, yeah, let's hope so. Julie's <laughs> <laughs> anyway. hiding behind Bernard. Okay. As you guys are standing here, you hear a voice go, Where's my dinner? Sorry. I, I mean, should we try? I, we can't carry these. Do we have to like open the thing and walk them there? Uh, uh, Maybe like know. hide behind them. Hide behind them while they walk up. Maybe he could like uh, we could hide behind them. I don't him. really want to put these giants in harm's way though. Me neither. Yeah. But how? And then okay. just like pow 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 pow. Yeah, we just say fuck it, run in there and say fuck you, dragon. That seems like a really bad it does. idea. Where the fuck's your broom? Yeah, that's coming for me. Well, the doors well, are still okay. I'll go in first, and uh, do not follow me right away. Because if you do, he'll fire breath us before, and hit everybody. Hey, hey, before anyone goes in, he puts a hand on Una and a hand on Bernard. You two can't fly. Well, you can't. Uh, but oh, I don't have any fifth level spells. Oh, yes, I do. Fuck yeah. So he's gonna do a hand on Una, a hand on Bernard. And then he's gonna be like, I need to figure this out. And he's gonna like do this to himself while touching Bernard. Yeah. <laughs> and he's gonna cast fly on both Una, Bernard, and himself. Good. So you guys have 60 oh, feet of fly speed for 10 minutes, and it's concentration. Yeah. You will pop her wings yeah. out as well. It's like, okay, we got 10 minutes on that fly spell. So. All right. So, Don't get hit, so we're Bernard. All gonna, I mean, right. God. So, so we're all gonna separate. Yeah, we should. Right. We're not up. all gonna be. Yeah. So that means we have to go in one at a time. Yeah, and based How on this... How high is the door? Uh, it's big enough for a adult red dragon to come out of. <laughs> uh, so it is... Real big. Uh, it is... 35 feet tall. Okay, just trying to set the stage. Mm -hmm. Alright, uh, yeah. One by one. How long between... Like how, don't, like how long after? Oh, well, God. I don't Six know. Seconds. Just to search for, for alternate options, Bernard's gonna pull out the Wanda Secrets and do it a, give it a tap to see if there's anything crazy. Real quick. Cool. Five feet beside the door, there's a hidden panel made of rock. Guys. And the doors are quick, opening quick. more. Over here. And just as you all are, are, are they guys opening? Quick. Are they opening inward. out? Inward. inward. Oh, so we can't even hide behind the door. Nope. Cool. So they're they're grinding inward. And Bernard's like, over here, so please, everyone. <laughs> yeah. Stroud just yeah, it's yep. over. Stroud's like, Bernard's fuck, I should have gonna... that. I should have waited on fly then. <laughs> Bernard's gonna shoulder the the okay. door and get it to All right, so as soon as you all get out of the way of the doors as they're opening, the door's fully open. And you're all just get out of the way in time. And Bernard opens up a secret panel that is three feet by four feet. Three oh. feet tall, four <laughs> feet wide. All right. 
looking inside, is there anything in there? Uh, it's pretty dark. Uh, you can make out what looks like it is made for remains to be disposed of. Like okay. an incinerator? Right, no, like a dragon latrine. Oh, okay. Okay. Alright. If things get crazy, this is like a spot. Alright. We gonna Where get we gonna go, attack though? this guy? <laughs> we don't know. I'm just saying it's a, it's another option if things get crazy. Oh, you know what? Fuck it. I'll go in first. No, I won't. I'm concentrating on fly spell. No, no, no. We don't need to do that. We'll fight this dragon uh, if we need to. I mean, we ha we obviously we have, have to. to. We don't know where this goes, so. Where's right dinner? Are you gonna hear <laughs> approaching the doors? All right. We gotta stop him before he gets to the giants. I'll go first. I'm resistant to both of this stuff, so I could take a couple hits while we spread out. Okay, good luck. <laughs> okay, I love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and he turns around the corner and All does right. the uh, he does the bonus action uh, Halgaroon. Okay. Dragon um, is 20 feet away, walking towards the door, and it just stops and looks right at you. Oh, are you dinner? You know, maybe. You guys see the <laughs> Pulls doors. out his sword and see... then just runs at him. <laughs> cool. You guys see the doors starting to close again? I need everybody to roll initiative. And Strauss sees the doors closing. He's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Great, great, great. Alrighty. Great, great, great. So, Bernard, what'd you get for initiative? 12. 12. Oh, no, Ophelia, what'd you get? 18. 18. Una, what'd you get? Dirty 20. Womp womp. I know who's going first. <laughs> Possibly. Ooh, Strahd also got, an, got a 20. Plus, he got a natural uh -huh. 20, so Strahd's had a 24. Dang. Uh, so... Like to have Dex. <laughs> Right, it's going okay. So Bernard, you're in the room. The doors are closing. The doors will close at the end of this round, just so everybody knows, based on the speed that they're closing. Strahd's is gonna follow up into the room. Bernard's only like ten feet into the room, uh, and the room, as I'll describe it now, is eighty feet in diameter, two hundred feet tall, and it looks like this is the interior of the volcano. Like the spout of the volcano is at the very top, um, and you can hear bubbling. And uh, in the middle of this room is a 60-foot diameter, um, no, sorry, 40-foot diameter hole that leads right into the molten lava of the volcano. So a 40-foot diameter hole in the middle of the room. The room is 80 feet wide. So you have 40 feet of clearance on every side of this room before plummeting into lava, essentially. And then it's, a, it's 200 feet tall uh, with nowhere to hold on to. You could climb the wall. It's a rough rock you can climb on. What's the size category of this thing? Huge. Super. <laughs> oh. Uh, so Strahd comes in, he sees the dimensions, he sees how far away Bernard is okay, yeah, we don't want the... We don't want to, uh... They got close. Punch up. And he... So it's 10 feet of movement to get into the room for Strahd. So he's gonna go 30 feet to the left of Bernard. Basically on the edge of this, uh... Right. Lava lake. But he has flies, so he can just step over the edge if he needs to. Uh... And he's gonna look up at this dragon and go, "Hey, fuckface!" Don't draw, don't draw his attention. You're the one concentrating on all the flies. He's gonna clearly come after. He doesn't know. Where. And he's gonna throw a chromatic orb at it and go for cold. <laughs> how did we make it this far? Seventeen, because I'm playing him, not how he actually is. Uh, that does not hit. The chromatic orb does not hit. This smashes oh. off the dragon's wing, and it just goes <laughs> two meals. Interesting. Uh, and that'll bring it to Una. Oh wait, no. Strahd's gonna bonus action get buff again with that rune. And now it's Una's turn. The doors are still open. They're shut, shut now. They're starting to close. They're still open. She is going to run into the room. Okay. The dragon's 20 um, feet away. <laughs> now I'm just imagining this dragon as the count. Ah! 
free meals. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you're under the room, Una. You're like basically right in Bernard's space because it's 10 feet to get into the room directly where Bernard is. And yeah. You don't is the dragon? F- no. I'm it's, it's not flying. So it's like it's, on the floor. It's walking towards Bernard. It's 20 feet away from you and Bernard. I wouldn't have enough. If it's like walking towards us, if she ran, could she and like ran by it and try to slash at it with the dagger of soul scaring? You can certainly try. But go, so you're running towards the dragon, there's 30 feet of movement total to get to the dragon. Oh no, wait, it's 20 feet away. I see that. will be, tw- yeah, you'll have moves 30 feet of yeah. movement to get into the room and run towards the dragon. That 20! Cool. You don't get <gasps> you don't get sneak attack though. No, but we're we're off to a good start. We're off to a good mm-hmm, start. We're mm-hmm. off to a good start. Okay, so that's gonna be eleven piercing damage. Okay. So doubled 22. is twenty two. Yeah, this thing's looking fine. <laughs> and then does the psychic damage get doubled? Yes. So that'll be twenty two psychic damage as well. Okay. And yeah, you just run up to it and slash it, and it's just like, oh, buffet. And when you get up close to it, this thing is probably the biggest creature you have ever seen. Oh, fuck. It's just like, Because Una has never seen an adult dragon before, and even adult dragons are big. She is just gonna bonus action disengage. She's running by. Which way? Ah. Uh, to the left. Like, oh, not in, not into the pit. Yeah, how much movement speed oh, do you have left? Because you use 30 feet to get up to the dragon. I would not have enough movement speed at all. Correct. Which means there are three people in its cone area then. Ah. Uh, oh, spaghetti. <laughs> so that'll bring it to the dragon's turn, and it's just gonna. <gasps> and let out its fire breath. I need a dexterity saving throw from Bernard, Una, and Strahd. 60 foot cone on that bad boy. Thankfully, Ophelia is just outside the door, so she sees the flames actually come out the door. Just. Uh, Alrighty, Strahd, dex save, big boy, big man. Ooh, six. What'd you get, Una? 22. 22 succeeds. Bernard, what'd you get? You're muted. 18. 18 fails. God, uh, <laughs> I have no bonuses to dex. All right. But it's fire damage. So you still get to have it. Which is good. Uh, Bernard and Strahd <laughs> take 70 points of fire damage. Bernard gets to have that to... 35. Yep. And Una, you also uh, take 35 uh. fire damage. Can I uncanny dodge that? Yes. So you take 17 uh. fire damage. Wait, you're a rogue. You have evasion, don't you? I yeah, should. So you don't yeah, have, that's you a can, rogue You don't thing. take any damage from that fire breath. Oh, cool! Sweet! So yeah, just... <laughs> but Bernard, but Strahd takes 70 points of fire damage. Oh. Yeah, that means we none of us can fly. Oh, yeah. Constitution saving throw. <laughs> Natural one. Yeah. Well... <laughs> I did <laughs> Fuck, good thing I wasn't hovering over the lava. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> uh, Bernard, yeah, you took 35 fire damage. Because you're resistant. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if that recharges, by the way. It does not. Oh, my God. Uh, and then the dragon is going to stay there. Bringing it to Ophelia. You see the fire, like... All three of your companions walked in, and then just... And you just hear them going, ow. Well, not Una. Una dodged it all. Ophelia's just gonna peek her head around the corner. Yeah, the doors are closing. (laughs) Is everyone still alive when she being Yes, sin? but it's 10 oh. feet of movement to get into the room because the doors are very thick. Oh, I love it thick. Um, nice. 
She's just gonna walk in ten feet and then just immediately fly up. Just up and out. How far up? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go the full thirty foot fly speed. Okay, so you thirty feet up into the air. Uh, and as yeah. a, the dragon just follows you like a cat following like a laser pen and just goes, Well then a game of cat and mouse it is. Anything else, Ophelia? Uh, movement to get into the room. Please movement movement. to get into the room. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Where is everyone else in relation to this? Bernard is technically right below you. Ten, like okay. Directly below you. Strahd is 30 feet to the left. And Una is 20 feet straight ahead. No one is super... Everyone on the ground... If it recharges fire breath, would be in the well. Either way, yeah, everyone's relatively close. But Una and Bernard and Strahd, unfortunately, he are not flying anymore because that was a seventy. That was seventy fire damage to Strahd. Yeah, that means he would have had to roll a oh, thirty-five Constitution oh. saving throw. <laughs> he does have advantage to to make to maintain concentration, but there's no way he can get a thirty-five Constitution. He has plus four to his Constitution. Uh, you need a pretty juicy con bonus. <laughs> uh, ooh. All right, she's gonna take out the staff of frost. Okay. Ooh. Unload. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Strahd's looking. Strahd's not looking bad, but he got hit hard. Seventy fire damage. Okay. All right. Cool. And Yona didn't get singed at all. Is there a way that I can position a sixty-foot cone from me to hit the dragon and hopefully not anyone else? Uh, based on your angle, it would probably hit Una because she's right in front of it. Because a cone originates, a cone originates from you. Yeah. So it would most likely hit Una because she's standing right in front of it. Una didn't have enough <sighs> movement speed to get out of the way. Holy <sighs> shit! Last time I hit somebody, but Una's also very dex. I'm gonna cone of cold. <laughs> well, yeah. Una succeeds. She doesn't take any damage from the cone of cold because she has evasion. But I think that's a reaction to do that. Okay. Don't uh, already used your reaction. Yes, yeah. you can't mm -hmm. dodge this. You don't automatically get. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> can I? You've only known Una for like a couple weeks, technically. True. You've known Bernard for so many evasion... together. <laughs> it doesn't say evasion's a reaction, though. It says uncanny like, dodge is a reaction. Double check and stuff because I need to. Is I will careful spell it. Yeah, that is just a feature. It is not a reaction. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Do well, it. I, I'm gonna careful spell <laughs> code of cold from the staff of frogs. You don't. Maybe. You don't. You don't need to. Oh yeah. 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 So it's she. Yeah. She. So she has a. She automatically succeeds. She automatically doesn't get hit by it. Yeah. Okay. So I will cone of cold. So the dragon needs to make a con save, correct? Uh, cone of cold, cone of cold, what is that? That is a con save, yes. Okay. And it's just like, oh, this is such a nice cold breeze coming in this hot uh, place. Let me Ooh. just see what that is going to be. 21. Yeah, yeah. I rolled just an, barely. I rolled an 8. <laughs> you rolled an 8 and it's a 21. Yeah. Yeah. Saving throws. Dragons. Oof. We we love that. This will take, so it's this gonna is, take yeah, half damage. Half damage, no, half of thirty, which is fifteen. Fifteen cold, cold damage. <laughs> Just yeah. whoosh, whoosh. these ice shards like appear on its body because the temperature inside this volcano, those ice shards just melt relatively quickly. Plus, it's a red dragon, so the, the heat just produced by this creature, those ice shards like slam into it, and then they just sort of melt. And it looks back, just keeps its attention focused on you up there in the sky. I haven't had flying prey in quite some time. Right. That's my turn. Okay. Do you have a bone? Oh, never mind. Sorry. So the dragon is going to use a legendary action and do a wing and do a wing attack. Just 
Uh, I need a F Una to make a dexterity saving throw. Twenty six. Twenty six succeeds. You do not take any bludgeoning damage, and you are not knocked prone. But the dragon flies up into the air thirty feet. Fuck! There's a wing attack, <laughs> and you, you you can get an attack of opportunity, Una, because you haven't used your reaction yet. Yeah, dagger, so scary. Go Was for it. it. Yeah, it's, it's just thirty feet you... up into the air. And that's two legendary actions to do wing attack. Guys, the last four battles in a row, Bernard has been useless. <laughs> <laughs> so have I. I can cast fly one more. I can cast fly a couple more times, Bernard. I might just do it to you and then stay the fuck down here. <laughs> <laughs> so Twenty-eight to hit. Twenty-eight hits. Roll damage. But again, no sneak attack on this either, because no one's within five feet, and you don't have advantage. You're just like shh. 11 piercing and 11 psychic damage. Okay. And it just up in the air 30 feet and just flapping its wings in the air. 30 feet up, 20 feet away from Ophelia. Uh, that's the drag. Oh, that's Ophelia's turn, bringing it to Mr. Bernard. Is there any world in which I can uh, use my movement to run up a wall and then jump onto the dragon? Not based on where it is in the room. We do have the slippers, though. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, but based on where it's positioned in the room, climbing. it's not any. It's yeah. not really close to a wall. Yeah. So. <laughs> Neat. I can't really do anything. All of my range stuff is pretty much fire spells, which probably won't have any effect. <laughs> uh, yeah. Also, um, just for the sake of everyone's yeah. sanity, <laughs> uh, red dragons are immune to fire damage. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, um, the closest I could ever get to this thing is, uh, 30 feet, correct? There's no world in which I can get closer than that? No. So I was like, don't worry, Bernard, I'm gonna cast fly on you, and you can just fly up there and punch it in the face. You know, that would be great. I'll just stay next to you then and wait for you to do that. And then I will use... I will hold my action to use the fly speed as an action whenever you touch me. I... You can't do that. I can't use... I can't you hold can't, a reaction. Use, I'm holding my action. Holding an action? You can't use an action? I can, like, hold the dash action, right? Let me look that up. Cause I, uh, Sorry. See so what Jeremy Crawford says. Uh, dash gives you extra movement off your turn. You have no movement. So you'd have 30 feet of movement. Because you're not doubling any movement. You're going from 0 to 30. Or whatever you have as your movement speed. So you'd go in from 0 to 40 only. Yeah. Yeah, I just had yeah. to look it up. Oh, okay, cool. So, but if he casts fly on me, I'd have 60 feet of movement. Correct. Okay. So I will use my bonus action to uh, Giant's Might, and then hold my action for bursting towards the dragon. Alrighty, Strahd will cast <sighs> let's see man he's useless on the... no he's not useless on the ground. Yeah he's just gonna cast a third level fly spell on you Bernard and use the last of his third level spell slots giving you 60 feet of fly speed and then that's his turn because he's already flexing okay Cool. So that'll bring it to. Are you ready? Reactions. You fly sixty feet towards the dragon. Yeah, I I want to get right on it. Yeah, you don't need. Yeah, it's like thirty feet away. So. Yeah. Uh. Er, so wait, positioning no, wise. Strahd was adjacent to you, thirty, and then you went to him. So the dragon is twenty feet away, and thirty feet okay. up. So. Yeah, I want to. Feet. I see him looking at Ophelia. It is like cat eyes starting to get dilated <laughs> yep. 
and I want to like fly right in between them so that he has to look through me to get to her. Still can pretty easily. I'm just saying, yeah. if he gets by me, he's gonna have to. He's gonna have to get by totally. me. Totally. And that brings okay. us to Una. This thing is twenty feet up above me. Thirty. You thirty. Want, you want thirty feet up. But if you have a means of hitting it, Bernard's right next to it, so you would get sneak attack. You know what? I'm taking another non pretty dagger. Just <laughs> Okay. Attack roll. <laughs> this How about this dragon? Twenty three? Hits. Brain its underside, so roll damage and sneak attack on that. We're gonna um, death by a thousand paper cuts. <laughs> it's fine. Everything's fine. So that's Six piercing damage okay. just from the dagger. Sure. <laughs> and then sneak attack mm -hmm. is. Uh, it's so funny that nobody has any ranged weapons. <laughs> <laughs> no ranged magic weapons. It's just, nah. 34 sneak attack damage. Okay, anything else, <laughs> Una? Um... Bo... If I use Ghost Walk, mm -hmm. can I still, like, attack them? Let me look. Because it doesn't say... Well, I will this form you have a flying speed of 10 feet. You can hover. Attack rolls have disadvantage against you. You can also move through creatures and objects as if they were difficult terrain, but you take 10 D 1d10 force damage. Uh, you can stay in this form for 10 minutes or until you end it as, end it as a bonus action. I'll say you can attack while in Ghost Walk, yeah. Bonus action. Ghost right. Walk. You destroy, you destroy one of your gothic trinkets and you become a ghost. You just see me take out the hand mirror and just sh like throw it on the ground and it shatters. Okay. And Smoke just... bomb. So yes, you have a flying <laughs> speed of 10 feet and attack rolls against you have disadvantage. So things can still see you, but there are attacks against you have disadvantage. Which counts for something. But your, uh, but your attacks don't have advantage because it doesn't even doesn't state that. So you're just a ghost. That's fine. All right. And... You're going to float up 10 feet? Yeah. Okay. You float it's up, never twenty feet from it. You float up ten feet. That'll bring it I'll to there. that'll bring it to the dragon who's gonna use its multi attack. So first with its multi attack, it uses its frightful presence and lets it a roar. Just <laughs> I need everybody to make a wisdom saving throw. Fudge. Dang it. I'm not gonna there's no way I'm gonna beat this. Strahd got a seventeen. There's no See, way I'm gonna which beat Which fails. These are some rancid vibes. Yeah. Nah, I think we're all f f a third. Yeah, Strahd. Anyone who... So, uh, Una, what'd you get? 25. You succeed. Jeez. Ophelia, what'd you Plus get? Plus 8. 13. 13. Bernard, what'd you get? 12. Bernard, Ophelia, and Strahd are frightened. Oh, no! Which means... Frightened. Your attacks have attacks and ability checks while within the source of... While the source of fear is within your line of sight are at disadvantage, and you can't willingly move closer to the source of your fear. Cool. Oh, cool. And the dragon is up in the air, and there's only one person close enough to it, so it's going to use all three attacks against Bernard. Let's do it. Let's tag go. So the bite attack is a 25 to hit. Uh, defensive runes. Okay. Ups my armor class to 26, so that blocks it. For the turn, Block. just for that attack? Just for that attack. Okay, it's going to go for its claw attack next. For a 28 to hit. That hits. Okay, you take 17 slashing damage. Okay. And then it's, uh, and yeah, another claw. Just so that's 8 yep. damage? Halved? Yep. Correct? Okay. Yep. Uh, and the third 
attack is a 33 to hit. <laughs> yeah, that hurts. Yeah. Dragons. Okay. And Jeepers that, creepers. Oh, that's, not, that's not that good. Uh, Jeeps creeps. Uh, 12 slashing damage reduced to half. You take 6. Okay. Uh, yeah. Brings it to Ophelia. And you are frightened, so you can't willingly move closer to it. And all attack rolls and ability checks while it's within your line of sight are at disadvantage. Cool. 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 Oh, it had its turns. Cool. Yeah, we get some legendary action. Cool. Um, cool. Do I make the saving throw for fear at the end of my turn or at the end of its turn? Uh, frightful presence at the end of each of uh, your turns. Okay. And if you save, you're immune on it for 24 hours. Well, I think I'm going to be frightened for quite, so Una quite is, some time. Yeah, I... yeah, Una is immune to that. But a saving throw does not count as an ability check, so it's not made with disadvantage. Cool. How far is it? 20 feet away from you. You can't willingly move closer to it. Great. 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 Oh, shit. Doesn't recharge its fire breath, either. God bless. Um... I'm just gonna fucking mind thrust it. It's the only thing I can really do. Okay. We need an intelligent saving throw. Alrighty. Uh, dirty twenty. It succeeds. It's gonna take uh, four, ten. So it'll take half of thirteen psychic damage. So six. Seven. We'll say seven. There's <laughs> Anything else, Ophelia? Like, tickle its brain. Um, how far? It's like the, the back wall where the doors are. Like that you just came through? Yeah, like how far? Uh, ten feet, because you came in twenty feet, or you came into the room and you just went up straight. So you're, it's the that wall is still ten feet behind you. So if I move 10 feet back, I'll still be in the room. Correct. Okay, I'm just going to move 10 feet back. Yeah, because the doors are 35 feet tall. So the doors have like 5 feet of just clearance. So I will just... Okay. Against that wall, get, trying to get as far away as possible. All right. Uh, at the end of your turn, it's going to use another legendary action wing attack. Just... And I need Bernard to make a dexterity saving throw because he's the only one within 10 feet. I'll tell you right now, it's going to be a fail. Uh, yeah, ten. Ten, okay. Two feet no. You take 18 points of bludgeoning damage. All right, so nine. And are knocked prone. Is it knocked prone no matter how high up in the air you are? Yeah, you fall. If flying creatures, they get knocked prone, they fall. Okay, so falling damage? Yeah, and you're th how far up? 30 feet, so you take 3d6 bludgeoning damage. Yeah. Uh, Can I react to feather fall? Yes. I will. So Bernard just lands on his feet. And oh. can't willingly move closer to it. Uh, and it also flies third. It's going to fly up to Ophelia. Just. <laughs> And that'll bring it to Bernard's turn. Do I save at the beginning or end of my turn? At the end, which reminds me, Ophelia, make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, that's probably going to be a fail. Uh, 17. 17 fails, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. cool. Yeah, Great, like... we love this. <laughs> <laughs> that means it's only like <laughs> oh, four in a hundred chance that we'll save. <laughs> I can't. Uh, so for my turn, 
it, it looks like the only thing I can do, because uh, I, Jenny, he's completely out of my range for anything. Yeah. Can't get close. Can't do anything. Um, I have no actions that would be useful. Okay. Um, because I, you know, my one range attack is a fire attack. Um, uh, so, um, let me see here. Shit. I had a potion of heroism, but it doesn't, uh, it doesn't nope. take away. <laughs> it does give me a bonus to wisdom saving throws, which would be nice, but, um. Oh, excuse me. Shoot. Sorry, I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out what I can actually do here, and it doesn't look like I can do anything. Um. Yeah, Freight so, is brutal. Yeah, I think I'm going to. Uh, bonus action. Second wind. Okay. Just to get some hit points back. Right. That's a good whatever. idea. Strash do that too. <laughs> Um, and that's a, uh, nice. 9 plus 15, so that's 24 okay. hit points. Okay. Uh, and then for my action, uh, I can't give anybody the help action for, like, an attack or anything, but, uh, you can aid a friendly creature. No. Nope. on the next ability check. Does anybody have an ability check they're thinking about doing here soon <laughs> that I can aid them with? Uh, shit. Um, uh, sorry. I just, I, I, I want to do something. Um, because I, I can't do anything. Like I, I, I yeah. uh, fuck. Um, because because he moved past me, mm -hmm. I can't even escape the room. Nope. Because he's between me and the door. Um. Nah. All right. I'm just ending my turn. Sorry, okay. I'm taking way too much time. Wisdom saving throw. Yeah. To see if you can succeed on the. No. Fuck. Fifteen. That's it. <laughs> okay. Bang. Uh. Ba -ba -ba. Legendary action. Terrified. Legendary action. The dragons can use a tail attack on Ophelia. Just. Bring it, bitch. I would say. Yeah, that hits. Twenty-nine to hit. Just hits? Just hits, yeah. Uh, you take 18 points of bludge bludgeoning damage. Just... Uh -huh, nothing. That's nothing. Uh, bringing it to, yes, yeah, Strahd, who is also frightened and can't get close. So he is going to... Um... Just with this advantage, you're gonna do a chromatic orb of cold at it. Nah, that's a 14 to hit. So whoosh, misses, and he's just like, damn it. Bonus action, he's gonna copy Bernard and do second wind. And 17 hit points. And then he gets to do a wisdom saving throw at the end of his turn. 17 fails. Bringing it to Una. The dragon is now 30 feet away from you. Or She's sorry, 20, up. 20 feet away to the door. She's going to fly like oh, 10 okay. feet. And it recharges uh. fire breath. 
Yeah. Oh wait, hold on. It hasn't had a turn in a bit. Never mind. So yeah, she going flat ten feet. And now she's like ten feet between her and the dragon. Mm -hmm. She still has one more random Cause she's keeping that dagger so scary, very close to her heart. Uh, she is going to chuck just like her last random dagger that she has at it. Okay, make an attack roll. And it'll be with sneak attack because Ophelia is in front of it. Perfect. Oh, that will be. <laughs> 19. 19 just hits. Oh. Just sinks into its, like, spine through throat. Right here underneath it still, so. Into, like, a Eight leg. piercing okay. damage. Okay. And... Da -da 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 -da. Eight piercing damage. And... 5, 10, 15... Twenty-seven sneak attack damage. It is out of triple digits. Ew. So it just sinks into the back of its leg and it lets it a roar. Just <laughs> so with Wails from the Grave, mm -hmm. how it's worded, it says, immediately after you deal your sneak attack damage to a creature, you can target a second creature. It has to be a different creature. Okay. Because it specifically states second creature. Okay. So she's just going to stay... 10 feet. Like, she's just hovering. She's just like, yo. Okay. Bringing it to the dragon. <laughs> it is going to turn around and bite you because it has a 10 foot reach with its bite. So just... At disadvantage. At disadvantage, of course. Uh, oh, that'll still hit, though. Dang it. Uh, that is a 27 to hit. At disadvantage. Yeah, I rolled a 13 and an 18. Okay, yeah, that hits. So it bites you. Uh, sees a little weird ghost flying around. It's like, Whoa. and you take. Oh, uh, you take fourteen piercing damage, okay. and nine fire damage from the bite. Okay. Um. And then. It's going to make two claw attacks against Ophelia, because only its claws can hit Ophelia. So the first claw attack is a 28 to hit. Mm-hmm. Okay. 17 slashing damage, just And then the second claw attack is a 23 to hit. Mm-hmm. And you take 14 slashing damage. And recharges its fire breath. Right. And that brings yes. it to you, Ophelia. Oh boy. I'm trapped here, aren't I? I cannot move without it getting a, a bite. Unless you action disengage. If you if you if you do that and head to Bernard, he doesn't have to save in order to hit this thing. <laughs> Especially if it chases you. <laughs> Cause he's not gonna he's not gonna save on this fear. <laughs> Just to let you know. <laughs> Neither am I. Um Yikes. Yeah, I <laughs> everything's raged. I, <laughs> I will action disengage. Okay. You have 30, how much fly speed do you have again? I have 30 feet of okay. fly speed. You, so you can just get to Bernard. But in doing that, would that move me like technically closer to the no. dragon? No, because no. you're technically flying away from it, because Bernard isn't anywhere near the dragon. Is that a good? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm just moving out of there. I just remember... 
you wouldn't know, but it did recharge its fire breath. Yeah, I don't need that to know that to be absolutely fucking terrified of this thing. I'm... 60 foot cone. I'm just trying to think 60 foot cone. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's been action Any bonus actions? Yeah. You get right beside Bernard, essentially. I don't have any bonus actions. Okay. I don't know Yeah, that's about it. Okay. The... <laughs> it is going to use a wing attack, a few, and Una is closest to it. Una, I need a dexterity saving throw. Okie dokie. That is a... 23. 23 succeeds by one. You are not bludgeoned oh. or knocked prone, and it flies Thanks. right in front of Bernard and Ophelia. Just so how far is it from me now? Uh, 20 feet. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Just you get, attack, you get an attack. You get an attack. You get an attack of opportunity, though. And yes, Ophelia, I need a wisdom save. Great. So I could try to like. Yes. Of, like a sword. Like, yeah. Okay. But you don't get sneak attack. No, it's a fail. 17. 17 is a fail. Uh, uh, that's going to be a 22. 22 hits. That will be 10 piercing damage and 11 psychic damage. Okay. It just in front of Bernard and Ophelia with its recharged fire breath. Bringing it to Bernard. Uh, yes. I am going to use my action to uh, drink the potion of heroism. Okay. So I have the effects of bless on me. Correct. Non concentration for mm -hmm. an hour. Correct. And I get ten temporary hit points. Correct. Uh, just so you know, then... just to ease everyone's anxiety, maybe the dragon is looking pretty hurt at this point. Uh, actually, I don't want to. I want to see yeah, because we out. we have is it out of triple digits? Done, we haven't done anything. Yes, I, ha I haven't hit it it's once. It's out of triple digits. <laughs> it is. I'm just gonna have to I, see here. I feel like we've uh, only it hit is it like below, three times. It's below half as well. Half is uh, half is still triple digits, and it's below half, and it's out of triple digits. Oh, it's half is still triple digits. Yeah, Una's been <laughs> kicking this thing's butt. <laughs> Una's gonna one v one dragon. All right. I want that third charge. Uh, so, yeah, potion of heroism. Okay, that's your action. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, I'd like to. Here's the thing: if I use my action surge, mm -hmm. all of my attacks on it would be at disadvantage. Correct. Even right. though I just drank this potion, and I'll have. Uh, you know, a plus, a, a D4 yeah. uh, addition to the saving throw at the end of the turn. So I always want to wait till the end of my turn and then do an attack. Uh, so I... Uh, instead of that, I'm going to use my action surge to uh, to try to grapple it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Testing family. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> it's a huge creature. Can you grapple it currently? If I'm large, yeah, because I'm okay. I'm I use I'm I'm enlarged so I can try to grapple it. Okay. Uh, still at disadvantage because you're frightened because it's an ability check. So it's a straight roll. Because I have advantage. Correct. Because of Giant's Might. Okay. Right. <laughs> I Eleven. rolled a 16 and a 15 plus Eleven. 10. 11. That's 25. So, it's grappled. Grappling a dragon. I am grappling a dragon. I am going to try to pin the dragon by holding its wings. It's, and... it's a huge creature. You can't exactly grab its wings, but I get what you're going for. Yeah. I'm trying to, like... Make it so that it can't go anywhere. Okay, that's a 11. Uh, 
and this it's is a, a 26. <laughs> yeah, it's currently restrained. And yeah, you're like right in front of, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I will try to do an attack since I have disadvantage, but I have advantage because of a thing. The advantages and disadvantages get canceled out. So straight attack roll. Straight attack roll. Uh, I think Frighten might be different, but yeah, straight attack roll. Okay. Realistically, it should be it should be disadvantage, but yeah. That's a twenty-two to hit. Twenty-two hits though. Uh, and that is. Uh, eight plus. What is that for? That's twelve damage. Twelve damage. Alrighty. It's like <laughs> trying to like get out of your grass. Yeah, did not go out anywhere. And then it's gonna smile a little bit if a dragon could smile. God dang it. <laughs> Anything else? Ayun! Ayun! <laughs> hey, uh, you got the rock our shit. Uh, no, I don't think I can do anything else. I used my action to... Uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure I used my bonus action Correct. somewhere along the run. Yeah. But I can't remember to what it was it. for. Action to grapple it. Bonus action to restrain it. Yeah, action yeah. to drink the potion, Kinda. actually. Yeah, I used my... Uh, action surge yep. to do the uh, grapples yep. and, and the attack. attack. Alrighty. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's, so yeah, that's it. It has legendary actions. It's going to do a legendary action and just go for a wing attack, but it can't fly while this is happening. So it doesn't get any mm -hmm. movement speed, but it just does the dexterity saving throws for Bernard and Ophelia. Because you okay. guys are within 10 feet of it. Alright. And mm -hmm. I, since I am also restrained, ah, I automatically fail. Correct. And Strahd is within 10 feet of it, too, because he just... No, no, he moved 30 feet away from you. So, yeah, uh, Bernard, you are knocked prone. Uh, What's that mean when you're restrained and everything? I and would I'm say... Like, I gotta look that up, too. What happens if you go prone while restraining someone? Or while restrained? I would assume that gets dropped. Uh, I'm just looking. Okay, I'll say you're still grappling it and keeping it restrained, but you just get knocked onto the ground, but you're still like holding on to it. Okay. So it still has, yeah. You're just you're just prone, which doesn't really affect anything here, yeah. realistically. Uh, yeah, because yeah, restrained and prone are almost mechanically. The same thing. Mechanically, yeah, we're good. Uh, so. All right, so Ophelia, what'd you get for dexterity? 19. 19 fails. Uh, you and Bernard both take 15 points of bludgeoning damage. Bernard takes 7 because he's resistant currently. Okay. And the thing can't move. It's like... Ugh. So that's a legendary action to do that. Bringing it to Strahd, who can't get closer. Oh, uh, Bernard, just make a wisdom saving throw anyway because it, it's the end of your turn. Right, I do need yeah. to make one. Yeah. Uh, and I'll add a d4, d4. to it. Ooh, it's possible I might be able to do it this time. I rolled a 17 plus this d4. Yeah. Oh, please. 2. 19. 19 is yeah. the exact DC. Bernard is no oh. longer frightened. <laughs> so I'll say like the act of it Jeez. knocking you to the ground, you crack your head off the ground, and that kind of just like discombobulates oh. you for a second. And yeah. <laughs> but now you're like, sweet. You're like under a dragon. And you're like, it's pinning you, but you're pinning it. Yeah. <laughs> Ophelia standing right beside you. Uh, I had a full Nelson. <laughs> Strahd is just going to be like, it's restrained, so this is just a straight attack roll. Essentially, he's going to go chromatic yeah. orb at fourth level and go cold damage. So just a straight attack roll. Strahd, you fucking suck, man. <laughs> <laughs> I am no longer using the digital dice. They keep rolling shit for Strahd. That's a 14 oh, no. to hit. So just <laughs> over his head. And he's like, fuck! But he can't get closer. Um... <laughs> Uh, it does get another legendary He's action. big, though. beefy. <laughs> so it is going to make a tail attack against Strut? Ophelia as a legendary action with disadvantage because it's restrained. Uh, 19 to hit. Yeah, that hits. Okay, so this tail slams into you. Um, you take 20 points of bludgeoning damage. Just... Okay, yeah, really she's out. Drops unconscious. <laughs> okay, that brings it to Una's turn. Oh, Strahd needs to make a wisdom saving throw. He has not been making those. Fuck yes, he's no longer frightened. He's like, oh, 
<laughs> Christ! I'm gonna kill that <laughs> fucking know, dragon. And all right, Una, it's your turn. You are still 20 feet away from it. Una is just like watching Bernard cuddle this dragon and Ophelia <laughs> drop to the ground, mm -hmm. and she's just like, "Okay." Bernard's just like, "Um, that's right, I'm big spoon." <laughs> <laughs> and you do not get sneak attack on any attacks because your allies that are in front of it. Oh, wait, hold on. It is restrained. Correct. So she would have advantage. But she's only 20 feet away in a ghost form that can she, only, she can only move 10 feet. So. Is it all, It's on the ground now, though? Like, Bernard, like, has it. Yeah, so it's technically from you 30 feet away. So if I. I'm trying to like brain this. Like I have ten feet of fly speed. Correct. If I were to fly, mm -hmm. then end it as my bonus You'd action. You fall out of the sky. Ten ish feet. You're twenty feet up because you had no, to go to the, no. I'm 30, twenty feet up. You're twenty feet, so you take you take you'd fall twenty feet. You'd land prone. Okay. And then to get up, that's half movement, Correct. and I wouldn't have I wouldn't have enough to get to him. Realistically, where you are currently in your current state, you don't have enough speed to get close enough to the dragon. Even if you dash as well. Because it's 30 feet away. Um, then I'm going to, like, f I'll, f I'll fly that 10 feet towards it. Okay. And... And you don't have any more daggers to throw. No, I don't. Um, but you have that hand crossbow. I have a crossbow. <laughs> yeah, you do. Uh, no, it'll just be like... <laughs> He loves that dagger, okay? She's yeah. just like, ah, the precious. So she'll just like, whoosh, try to yeah, shoot it. Yeah, hand cross, but you can shoot with one hand, so you don't have to put the dagger away. Uh, all right, give me an attack roll. Just... It is... 25. 25 hits, just right in the back of the head, just... And sneak attack. So that's nine... Piercing damage. Okay. And then sneak attack. Totally. Oh god. <laughs> and remember, this thing recharges fire breath, and it's looking real hurt. And there's two people in front of it. Come on, Una. <laughs> Thirty-six sneak attack damage. So. <laughs> It's in low double digits now. And it's just like... Rrr! And you can see the fire starting to curl up in its mouth. Oh no. Oh no. Is there anything I can do? Is there anything I can do? Unfortunately, no. No. Okay. She is just... <laughs> so many other misery get... with your bonus action sneak attack. Just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I don't was really hoping to... Just... I don't think there's anything. I would have whales to the grave, but I yeah, can't do that. Unfortunately, just one creature. I guess she's just chilling in the air. Okay. That's going to bring it to the red dragon, and it's going to look down at the two people in front of it, and. <gasps> and Bernard and Ophelia both automatically fail that deck save because restrained and prone. Restrained and unconscious. So. Could roll low here. Uh, so you guys are fire resistance. That's a halved. And Ophelia, you only take one failed death save though, because it's not a melee attack. Uh, so and since you're both fire resistant, you both take thirty-one points of fire damage. Just. I rolled sixty-three. So yeah, Ophelia is still conscious, still alive. Bernard, thirty-one fire damage. Ophelia, you take one failed death save. Just, and then it does not recharge the fire breath, and that'll bring it to Ophelia. Ophelia, I need a death saving throw, please. No nat ones, please. Oh no. That's a three. That's another. That's two fails. So. You can see the burns starting to get to Ophelia, like her body is heavily singed from this dragon fire, and she's starting to, like, you can see that her body's starting to fade from that. Uh, that'll bring it to Mr. Bernard Bunsen, who is restrained and prone in front of this dragon. Yeah. Oh, 
Uh, it does get a legendary action. Because it was its turn, it can do a tail attack. Cool. At disadvantage. At disadvantage, but I, but if he goes for Ophelia, it's straight attack roll. If he goes for you, it's a straight attack roll. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, digging my... Even though all my arms and stuff have him mm. restrained, I'm digging my chin into, like, okay. the sensitive part so, of his back. To make, to make <laughs> so this, that he's really annoyed. <laughs> I'm going to leave this to chance. <laughs> so if I roll a 1 or 2 on this d4, it's for Bernard. 3 or 4, it's for Ophelia. Oh. You know what? Nah, it's going to go for Bernard because he's still conscious. That's right. I'm going to kill your ass. <laughs> Fuck you, d20. Natural one. It goes a swing its tail, and Bernard, you kind of just get your leg up just to, like, kick the tail out of the way. Get that shit out of here. You see it coming like, straight toward you to squish you, and you're just like, nope. <laughs> uh, but yeah, your turn, Bernard. Oh, boy. Uh, you're underneath it, prone, restrained, grappled. Or restrained, yeah. 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 But flat attack rolls. Ah, oh, fuck. It could use wing attack. Why the fuck would it use its tails? Fuck. Meh. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, I guess, yeah, let's do it. First attack. Okay. Uh, that's not going to hit. That's it's a 13. 13 misses. You just, you can't get leverage with that attack because everyone's pinning everyone down. 29 on the second attack. 29 hits. You get uh, enough leverage with that and you sink your sword into the side of this dragon. Uh, and that is... 7 plus 8, that is 15 damage. That's exactly what you needed. How do you want to do this? Uh, I know that we need to get the uh, dragon out, of, or we need to get the giant out of there before this thing dies. Mm -hmm. So Bernard's going to do, he's going to try to do a mortal wound and get it to where he knows for sure it's going to start, it's going to bleed out eventually. And he's just going to hold that wound open with the grapple. So you're going for a non-lethal, so this thing will be making... Death saving throws. Then, well, I'm going for so that's, that's what that's what it'll be. That's yeah, what it'll okay, be. guys, get the get the giant. Okay, so yeah, and okay. save Ophelia. Gosh darn it, so she's dying. It's, it's unconscious. Split up, guys, do your thing. It's unconscious on top of Bernard, bleeding out. And Bernard's gonna oh, that yeah dead weight. Yeah, well, it's, un <laughs> it's not dead. But he's yeah trying to do this. You guys can save the giant. So that's your, you're going to end your turn there. And Bernard. Ophelia. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what happens if one of us is close to dead. So are you you're ending, your turn, you're ending your turn there then? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Remember, those who have Uvar can give people advantage on saving throws and stuff. <clears throat> Una. Uh, <laughs> uh, Strahd is going to run over to Ophelia. He doesn't have any more healing spells. He hasn't had prepared any of them though unfortunately so he's going to try to stabilize her he's using his action as a, with a medicine check he's like uh and he's just gonna try to like hold the burns oh yeah that succeeds that's a 17 plus 3 Ophelia is stabilized no longer making death saves hey. and will become conscious unless she takes healing in two hours uh so that's Strahd's turn that's how he's ending his turn actually no he's not he's bonus action <laughs> out to where the giants are and then action surge because he's a fighter to open the cage and the little kid giants want to stay here it's their home their family still lives here so they stay but the lumbering one comes out and goes oh friends and he lumbers over uh, I guess he's an initiative now because well he doesn't lumber over yeah he is in his own initiative because we're still in initiative because the dragon is still alive. Uh, fuck, fire giants are a beast. All right, so initiative for this guy. Three minus one, two. <laughs> so he goes at the very end. Yay. Okay. What's his speed? 30 feet, okay. Yeah, moving All we have dash. to be doing is touching him, correct? Correct. Or at least as we think. That's what you guys think. Uh, that'll bring it to Una. The dragon is unconscious on top of Bernard. So, if I attack it, it's like an automatic crit? Bernard's just like, I got this, don't worry about it. So, we got 
the dude. He's in the room with us now. That's what we want. Uh, the giant's not in the room with you yet because he has to have his turn to use his movement to get into the room because it's still an issue. He no got... one's touching the, dry, the, yeah. the giant yet. Someone has to be Aren't touching him before the, we kill the dragon. Yep. You guys all have to be touching him. Well, not touching, but like within the vicinity of the dragon when it faces everybody. Yet. But for the giant specifically, because he's not part of your party, you get the idea you might have to be touching the giant so he can come with. Uno wouldn't be, wouldn't have enough movement to get to the giant. No, he's th he's like outside the room. Or Strahd, you had to use a misty step to get there. Well, he actually didn't have to, but oh yes, he did. Movement speed to get to Ophelia was thirty feet. He has forty feet of movement. But yes, you're still in your ghost form. You don't have a love speed. You could, I mean, you could hold your action for when. We are touching the giant to like stabby stab <laughs> the dragon. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, she'll she'll like fly over top of it. Okay. Because I guess it'd be like ten feet. Mm -hmm. And then she'll like drop. Can she drop out of her ghost form, land, take the damage or whatever, then hold the action to like attack it with the dagger? You'd be so prone, scary? so the attack would be disadvantaged because you're fa you're falling out of the sky. So yes, you can, but you'd be prone, so the attack would be disadvantaged. Would well, be a straight but attack roll because it's a, it'd yeah. be straight attack roll because it's unconscious. <laughs> but because it's unconscious, even though attacking here, it's just still two failed death saves. It has to hit three failed death saves to be killed at this point. And if, so it rolls, like if it rolls a natural 20 on a death save, she back up. With one hit point, but she back up. So, just... Yeah, just gonna okay. Plumbing. hold that. Alright, you take... Six points of bludgeoning damage and you're prone near the dragon. Close enough to the dragon. Just <laughs> Bernard, you see to see uh, uh, Una... No longer a ghost, plummet, and just boom, land beside the dragon. Oh. Oh, the, you look like you turned your ankle there. Ouch, that that looks like a smarts. <laughs> we're good, we're good, and she's just <laughs> getting ready to just stab this thing. Well prone. She'll stand up. Okay, you stand up. Because <laughs> falling does not cause movement. Yeah. Alright. Uh, that brings it to the dragon, then. Oh, do you know what I love about dragons legendary resistance it can choose to succeed the saving throw if it fails oh cool that's fine oh fuck that. that was a 19 it's gonna use legendary <laughs> it succeeds anyway yeah. but uh fuck it doesn't fuck all right <laughs> uh that brings it to ophelia who's unconscious so it brings but it, stable but you stable vibing. so it brings it to bernard vibing all right and nobody's touching the He's still the... fuck far away with Strahd. All right. I'm going to wrench at the wound to get, one, you know, a bit to make it fail a death save. Okay, make an attack roll with a, with just a straight attack roll because you're still technically pinned under it. Yeah. Uh, that is a 25. Hits. Takes two failed death saves, and there's no way you can deal more than its okay. max HP, so... Yeah. So two failed death saves, one save. Anything else, Bernard? Yeah, the plan is when this thing finally dies to tear its head off and take it with us. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly if, if that's possible. I'm just going to give it a shot. Uh, that'll bring it Because to... having a red dragon head just sounds fucking cool. <laughs> so that'll bring it to Fang, the fire giant, who's like, oh, in here? And he uses 30 movement speed and dash to get up to everybody and go, oh, dragon. And that's just in giant. Just ends his turn right there. Yeah, just touch out, touch up one of us. Pick, a, pick I already up. used my action to dash to get in here. Oh, that's great, buddy. You you really can't do anything wrong. You're such a great dude. That'll bring it to Strahd, who's gonna misty step <laughs> again and touch the giant. Back into the room. He's like, I'm wasting fucking spells for this, but it's fine. It's what that was. Felix just vibing on the floor. <laughs> oh wait, he might not have any more misty spell spell slots. Yes, he does. He has one more second level spell slot. So he's just like, into here, he's like holding the giant. Uh, that'll bring it to Una. Make a dagger of soul scaring. Attack with advantage because it's unconscious. 
Uh-oh, I love that Udo's you know. got the last three things. Udo's gotten the killing blow. <laughs> Which is somewhat not okay, based on what the dagger does. Yeah. 29! 29 hits. How do you want to do this? Uh, Take the she, head. she is just gonna, like, it's stab It's a huge right dragon. She wouldn't the... be able to behead it with the dagger. <laughs> Dang it. I already died on I understand. She's going to, like, You guys do open not have enough time jaw. to get that head. Okay. Just gonna open its jaw <laughs> up, hack off a fang, okay. and then grab the fang and stick it, like, with the dagger, just, like, shoo, together. Again. <laughs> Again. All right. She has a thing. She likes that. As you do that, the dragon explodes like all these other creatures have as you were all bamped back into the prison cell. Even and as Ophelia? you guys are yes, even Ophelia. Okay. Uh, and as you're bamped back into the prison cell, you guys see if Una looking a little not so great, a little different. Uh, those eye, her black void eyes become more encased in shadows. Uh yeah, they're just emanating shadows. Uh, Una, you have all three charges now. You gain a plus five to your passive perception and dark vision up to 120 feet. And the curse that's listed under that dagger is now 100% active at all times. <laughs> and no longer disadvantage on all your ability checks and shit. Aw, oh, thank God. And as you guys <laughs> bamf back into that room, Ophelia unconscious, the final chain on Kazan breaks, and he, oh, you did it. He smiles, snaps his fingers, and conjures robes for himself. And he also conjures a little necklace around his neck with a little gem on it that's glowing a little bit. He rubs his hands together, opens a rift behind him, and says, You have 30 seconds to leave this place or you get destroyed along with this demiplane. And that's where we're going to end the session for the week. Kazan's a motherfucking lich. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. Well, I'm unconscious. <laughs> That's fine. So, <laughs> that is all four guards dead. Or all six. Adult Red Dragon, Baylor, Planetar, Death Tyrant, and a That's weird a... Yugala thing. That was a hell of a story arc, Justin. Like, that was a, like, a the book the, the the spell book story arc <laughs> yeah. or something i don't know yeah it was like a good couple it was like three, four three episodes two I'm like a each. discount dovahkiin right now yeah. <laughs> um yes yeah, so everyone is in this room along with a fire giant <laughs> and kazan is back at full power we got to figure out a name for this guy he said isn't he said people called him fang I like, Does he like, I like that? I like adding a bit more yeah. something to it. Fangor. Fangor. Fangor sounds like a pretty good yeah, you guys have giant. a fire giant a bit of companion. Spice. Oh. Yeah. A little, a little bit of spice. Uh, obviously, he won't be sticking around for like a long time, because fire giants are a hefty ally to have with you. Uh, no, we're just we're just going to send him, totally. send him free. Totally. You know? Send him to some castle raven locked. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, a fire giant dark lord. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, so yeah, next week, you guys have we'll be rolling initiative again, and you guys have thirty seconds to leave the demi plane through that rift, which is twenty five feet up, on the wall. And <laughs> so you just gave us another puzzle. Fuck, yeah. Fuck you, man. I and, won't kill you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, thirty seconds, which is six rounds to leave, and at the start of the sixth round, any creature still in this demi plane gets destroyed along with the demi plane. And people have spells to deal with this. Strahd has Dimension Door if he needs to use it. Ophelia has wings, but she's unconscious. Yeah. I'm, uh, and we have no... Una lost nobody. the room. Yeah. But I have the cape. You do. That's Dimension Door, you, another person. So Strahd can... So, and 25 feet, so the giant can just walk over and just reach out it. But there is a lich in here who, wants, for some reason, does not seem too nice. Anyways! I just saying this motherfucker. The least he can... There's a reason he's... There's a reason he's doing this to you guys, and you can probably tell based on a history with a certain character why this is happening. Anyways. <laughs> Strap that motherfucker. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching, everybody. I will say, depending how next session goes, it will be a level up based on this being a huge thing being dealt with. So it's not just cool. the shards that'll level you guys up. 
Uh, anyways, uh, thanks for watching, everybody. If there's no donations tonight, but that's fine. We're at 205 out of 1,200, which is great because we still have the entire month of June left up until July 10th. So again, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll be back here next week with the continuation of Shadows Over Ravenloft with a lich fight, maybe. Who will? We'll see how that goes. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but until then, thanks for watching, everybody. Thank you for playing, you guys. That was a lot of fun. That dragon fight could have been bad, like real bad. Um, fuck. Um, but that was real good. That frightful presence. Whew. Yeah, um, especially to someone that has plus zero on wisdom and mm -hmm. dex. I never realized, like, even though my my character is fairly decent in like those three abilities being not so great in dex and wisdom real bad <laughs> it's a good thing yeah, real bad so it's a good thing good Ophelia thing. is resistant to fire because that fire breath at 70 and 63 would have been gross but uh yeah thanks for watching yeah. everybody and combined with like all the attacks will like just it could have been bad uh but thank you for watching thanks for playing you guys it was a lot of fun uh, we'll be here Sunday for the continuation of Soldiers with Lich Queen at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Shit's getting real there. I had to break up a fight between two siblings because they almost killed Ophelia's pet fox. Uh, also, because they were being dicks to each other and something happened. Uh, Sounds about right for the disaster the siblings. Not in the wrong. Not my fault. You both are technically in the wrong. Children! Anyways. Not my fault uh, at all. I did nothing wrong. Hannibal's 35 and he's walking around with like 16 year olds anyways um <laughs> they're all siblings they're all siblings it's not gross <laughs> um and uh we'll be back yeah next week with all those games sunday for the continuation of descent into avernus because that's getting spicy uh and keep a lookout for some future stuff happening on the channel because they revealed the new adventure today and i said i'd stop running modules but that adventure kind of tickles me in all the right places because it's icewind dale <laughs> It's a snow setting, and it's a horror adventure, so I really want to run it. Anyways. Um, We've been a bunch of dirty boys tonight. Yeah, we have. <laughs> All of us. Yeah, we have. In the gutter. Uh, Just swimming in gutters tonight. Totally. Uh, but That's where I live, Garrett. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, but uh, we'll be back next week. I expect the three of you to be, well, probably two of you to be discussing plans and how to deal with this next little encounter because one of you is gonk unconscious um <laughs> but we will be back next week for the continuation of shadows over ravenloft and based on how things went tonight the end is near so uh yeah so good night everybody have fun stay safe and if you can't donate to the charities now don't worry about it we're going to be raising money for charities indefinitely to support people who need it um and to fight back against bullshit and corruption and stuff. So yes, uh, thanks for watching, everybody. And when you find this on YouTube, watch this on YouTube. Toss a little like up, rub the little like button. Um, good night, everybody. I have to go play Last of Us in, t in an hour and a half. So good night, everyone. <laughs>